Hey everybody, welcome back to the fish tank. Great to have you here. It's tournament time again. Knight's Duel number 33. It's brought to you by Team Mana Frenzy and the developers Beater Dwarf. Great to have you here. Hope you guys are having a great Saturday wherever you are. Now, hopefully people will get here on time because we do have the whole daylight savings thing going on where America has gone, their clocks have gone forward. In Europe and other places, our clocks haven't changed yet. So normally we're here in London. We're normally five hours ahead of uh, Eastern America, whereas now we're only four. But our clocks do change. I don't know if it's this weekend or next weekend. Uh, but basically, if you're in America, nothing's changed. 10 a.m. start time. If you're in Europe, then it's probably an hour earlier. So fingers crossed people will get here on time. Renzo, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for the sub. Now... Knight's Duel, 33, 1v1, $400 prize pool. Um, we have regular card bans so the players can ban uh, a master and three cards for their opponent. Their opponent can then have those bans back at them. Normally the bans are done in private so nobody gets a benefit. We do, have all, as always, have some card bans as well. Season bans. So the current season cards are banned. So that's High Marshal Rystar who... It's kind of dividing opinion, I think. Some people think he's terrible. Some people think he's great. And the Crossbow Clubhouse. Uh, both of those cards, season cards, are banned. Now, we do unfortunately still have some card bans due to bugs. And I am a little frustrated that the bugs are taking quite a while to iron out. Seems like there's a lot of stuff that the devs have been working on. And a lot of it has been outside of the gameplay. So we've got some bugs that have been existing for far too long, to be honest. Um, and hopefully they'll get squashed soon. But, you know, they really have um, been going on for a while. Now, we do have um, a list of those. So Prowler, Cage Prowler, Rabid Prowler, Slithering Summons because of the Prowler. They're banned because of the bug. Musketeer, Rocket Scrap, Unholy Ground. Uh, and then some new ones for this season. Storm Tamer. Uh, that's one of the cards recent. Oh, that was the 2.0 card. Um, that's been bugging everyone out, so that's banned. And Incubus now teleports to the Master Tower for some reason. That is also banned. Right, so those cards are banned, but of course everything else is A-OK -okay to go. There are some bugged cards that have some warnings, but the players are aware of that. And that's they're just cards that kind of don't work quite correctly. But the way that they're broken means it's a, it, the detriment to the people playing them. So if you want to play them, go ahead. For example, Bara stops doing damage when... Bara dies. Still unsure if that's a bug or a feature, um, but uh, that needs to be confirmed or fixed. As always, we've got the brackets in... Hey, I just popped up on the screen. Three minute delay, of course, um, because we want to keep everything fair and above board, so no stream sniping. Three minutes should be fine in a game like Minion Masters. Um, yeah, so brackets... There's a link in the chat so you can get on board with that. Follow along from home. Um, do a couple of Discord announcements and then we're good to go. So we'll have a look in a second at the people that are in this event. As always, we're going to have some new people and some existing people. Existing is not quite the right phrase, but uh, we'll go with it. Right, Discord announcement going live, done, and set up a Discord event as well. So these events are, uh, they are open to everyone. So regardless of your ability, whether you're new to the game or not, you're more than welcome to join these events. This event you can't join because it's already started, uh, but the next one you're more than welcome to. Um, if you're a new player, these are great ways to get involved in the community and uh, meet some people as well as learn a lot of stuff. A lot of great players that you can learn from. You might not play against... You might not be good enough to play against some of these players in the ladder, but this will give you an opportunity to play against them. And um, it's a great way to learn to see how the top players play um, with regards to just their deck choices, their playment choices, their play style. All that kind of stuff. Right, Shinori, what's up? Adaptive Anarchy, good to see you. 
right, Mini Masters Tournament, which is going to do a Discord event, and then we'll get into our first game, hopefully pretty quickly. I am on my own today, as you can see, but don't worry. Fishy will keep it locked in and loaded. I what that means. Right. Um, okay, so Discord event has started. But the first thing we'll do is we'll, we'll decide, well, actually, we'll look at who's here, then we'll decide on the match we're going to go with, and then we'll have a look at the bands. Uh, no developer today. Um, so FDM normally joins me. He is on vacation at the moment. I hope he's having a good chill, whatever he's up to. Right. Okay, that's a bit of admin out of the way. Good, good. So... There's, there should be a pinned comment at the top for the brackets. You can follow along with that. Um, don't, uh, well, let's just double check to see if these brackets are live. Right, okay, so these are the live brackets. So we can see we've got Dark Crow, that ain't it, Chief, set, non existent, destroy, sorry, death shoot. <laughs> I'm not sure why he hasn't changed his name to Disu on here. Lapoy, Destroy, Zenweb, Sentera, I'm Znart, and Yuxen here. Looks like we can have four rounds of Swiss, so the players will play against each other for those four rounds based on their results. Winners will play winners, etc. And then we'll have our top four, and then we'll have our shootout. <sighs> Let's go. Right. So, game number one is going to be... We're going to have a look at the Dark Crow against That Ain't It Chief. Dark Crow is the reigning champion. He's won many events, including the last one where he beat Set. Um, wouldn't be horrifically surprised to see those players in the final again. But Death Shoot will definitely have something to say about that. Destroy will definitely have something to say about that. And some of the other existing and experienced players as well. Right, so let's see if we can get this set up as quickly and efficiently as possible. Thanks for everyone joining today. Good to see you here. Hopefully you guys are well. Right, so... This is... Oh yeah, I tried to set this uh, spectate up ahead of time, but uh, players were already playing, so that kind of messed things up a little bit. But we'll do what we can. Oh, most important news. Dark Crow has got his name back. So, as you may or may not know, you now have the ability in Mini Masters to change your name. Dark Crow was user 189 or whatever for a long, long time. Uh, so he had the ability to change his name. But unfortunately, some little shit stole his name. Uh, but the devs fixed that. So he is back and official. Right. Bans. As mentioned earlier, the players all have ban powers. You can ban one master and three cards. That prevents your opponent from playing those. And your opponent has that ban power back towards you. Uh, we often see quite a strong ban meta, and we'll see how that plays out here. Of course, we've got a, the latest balance patch where things have uh, been changed a little bit. We've also, if you've been following along on my YouTube, you'll know that we've got another balance patch coming with 2.3 and um, hopefully you've got an idea of what kind of stuff is going to be in that and maybe we'll talk about that um, if we get some time oh one of the cool new things that the devs added there's a lot of things that are that the devs have not fixed like i said about like the, the broken cards and stuff which are kind of frustrating but one of the cool things they did do is they added a deck search and that's great for people that have many, many pages of decks because uh, now you can just type in the, the master, the card, uh, the name of the deck, whatever you're looking for, and it will show you. So that's a really good change. Um, and that was a change I think that the, the devs heard that the community really wanted and they implemented it. So that's a really nice thing to see. Right, so the first bands of the day are just coming in hot off the press. So, Dark Crow against That Ain't It Chief. 
going to be our game one. So remember, we're going to be best of three for the Swiss rounds and then best of five for the, um, the Eliminator. And there will also be conquest rules when we get to the best of five. Conquest rules means if you win with a master, you can no longer play that master. Whereas those that restriction is not something that is in the earlier stages. Right, so let's have a look at the bands coming in from Dark Crow. Morelia. Bouncebury Flingers. Uh, Zeppelin Bomber. And High Inquisitor Ardera. Nothing shocking there. The Bouncebury Flingers really are... The devs have put themselves in a really awkward position to balance that card. They moved the Shrooms from the Flingers um, to the Bouncebury Flingers because they wanted a simple card for new players for Zen Chi. But then that made this Bouncebury Flingers super difficult to balance because you get two reasonably okay minions, uh, anti-kind of horde, anti-air minions per cycle. And of course you get two shrooms per cycle just for a two mana card in your deck. So that really caused them a lot of problems. Right. And then of course we've got bands coming back towards Dark Row, which is also Morelia. And then we've also seen Blood Imps, Bouncebury Flingers, and Beam of Doom. Now, if we see someone play a uh, band Beam of Doom, that kind of gives us an indication they're going to be play playing a heavy deck um, that would be really punished by something like the Beam of Doom. Uh, that's normally what we see. Okay, so not really shocking bands there. Uh, the Blood Imps are a little bit strange. Feels like there's, there's better things you could ban than the Blood Imps. Okay, let's just double check that we're ready to go here. It's Chief set up to spectate. Dark Crow set up to spectate. We're getting ready for our first game of the day, guys. Thanks for joining us. It's Night Jewel, number 33. I'm going to say ready. Let's see who's going to delay us. Okay, this should be good. Now, Dark Crow, as I said, reigning champion. That ain't it, Chief. We've seen him in a lot of events, but you would expect Dark Crow to really be um, the favourite for this match and probably for the event as a whole. Uh, Set is here. I know Set's been practising very hard. He's quite confident for this uh, event, so we'll see how that works out. I know Set and Dark Crow did play in my fishbowl brawl 1v1 event recently and set did win by two games to nil there so that's um some more information that the players have about each other and what they're playing uh if i remember correctly that match that they did they did a special let's not ban anything um just for a bit of fun um so that might not be something we can take too much from but we'll see we'll see what happens Zeppelins are very strong in the meta, so not surprising to see that band. Ardera as well. Um, Bouncebury Flingers, as we said. Just such easy shrooms with the blue golem. Um, and, and one of the things that we saw from the PTR is there was a lot of proposed changes for Zen Chi cards. Because apparently Zen Chi cards as a whole, as a faction, are underperforming. We've got a few standout ones, like the Bouncebury Flingers like the Blue Golem, but as a faction over all, they're kind of underperforming. So a lot of the cards were getting Growth Burst Shroom buffs, or at least proposed buffs, whether that will go through to live or not, which is kind of um, concerning to a lot of us with regards to the balance. But we'll see if they go through and um, if that'll change too much. We have spoken quite a lot before about the these faction bonuses, how easy they are to get compared to how powerful they are. Yeah, Todd says they could just give the copy to the Myriad. Apparently that's not easy for them to do. However, it's set up in the, the back end, so that's probably a non-starter. Um, but uh, yeah, that would have been a lovely, lovely change. Or just how that they set that up from the start. Um... We'll see what they decide to do. But yeah, like the Growth Burst Shroom, 
it's so easy to get a big buff blue golem, right? You, you get a shroom, it lasts 40 seconds or whatever. You don't have to do anything. It's just there waiting for you to pick it up. You have a little kind of awkwardness about um, the, the location of it, but that doesn't normally hurt you too much. Things like the uh, the revelry as well. Super easy to trigger. Super powerful buff. And I think they need to... If something's easy, it shouldn't be like super powerful, right? Besides who tries to watch 15 streams this month, apparently. <sighs> Not mine. What cards are globally banned today? We went over that earlier. Right, I'll go over them again in a minute, but we're going into our first game here, guys. Tuning in to the Caesar Network. We've got a corker of a fight for you today here on Minion Masters. Right, let's see if this is all working correctly. Should have our dual deck technology. Right, here we go. Wrecked as Dark Crow, that in it, Chief as Apep. Okay, don't hate that. It doesn't kill it, but it does keep the bridges for quite a while. There we see the Kaber. Remember, the Kaber doesn't get... The, the Kaber minion is Rage, but his Toss is not. So the, the Kaber only does 150 damage as opposed to 225 as it did before. He's also likely to get nerfed by one mana in the next patch as well. But let's see. That ain't your chief handling that nicely there. Right, so Chief is playing a uh, Korgov deck, but his Korgov is pretty deep in his deck, which is a little bit frustrating. Normally, you cross your fingers and hopefully you get Korgov in your opening hand. I don't think he did. I might have missed it. In fact, I did miss it because he's he, this is uh, the Nether Step is already reduced by one. So, ignore what I'm saying. I'm paying no attention. Right, he see the power of the Kaber. Clears everything there. Chief will be okay with how this is going so far. Mana Puff Madness. With Azali. Always struggle to... If I don't see who casts it, always... See that Woodsman just bends Azali in half. Right. So Chief got off to a decent start, I think. But Korgoth is ready to go. He's probably going to have to... Wait here. This is going to be a little bit frustrating. Got to be careful with the brother because you've got to kill it before that light the shield guard pops off. The shield of light. There it's going to go. Okay, so he's going to take some damage there. He really wants to get his Korgoth out, but he's got a lot of pressure on him. Okay, Korgoth's going to be coming real soon. get a big caber to the face. Okay, a lot of mana puffs out though, so that's a little bit frustrating for Chief for sure. Oh, that's going to be a lot of damage on those blood imps. Right, Chief needs to be careful. Slowed Korka for the top is not going to do too much. Leaver's going to work through that shield guard pretty quickly. Those puffs were alive for quite a while, which is a little bit concerning. Thanks for the subs, guys. Appreciate it. Okay. We'll... Should be able to close this out here. Cycling round to his next Korgoth. Korgoth, remember, is Mythic, so you can only have one of those at a time. XP for Dark Crow now. He's going to be getting his perk. Three first. The One Punch Blast. The mana puffs are really annoying for Chief because he wants to kind of build up this push with Korgoth, but the mana puffs mean that he just can't allow the bridges to be ignored. Thanks for the prime. This gonna hurt a lot at the top. Or oh, the assassin just staying alive. That was important. Chief down to 410 HP. Is Apep though. Needs to be careful though because we've seen some blood imps out and about. I'm not sure who I think actually no yeah those were actually those were they were his blood him so he does need to be super careful with those. Red perk number three. 
And Ram is going to get shot down. Oh no, it's going to get on face with one HP. Nothing left to kill it. I don't think Chief can hold on here. Let's see. He is still alive, but that's slow from the Frost Feather, Frost Feather flyby. It's been really punishing. Those puffs are staying alive for a while on the bridges. That's just giving Dark Crow some decent extra mana. Chief doing a good job defending, though, but... See, this is the situation with these big cards like Korgoth. He's at the bottom, locked down, doing nothing, whereas he really wants him at the top. But those assassins doing work! This is one of those situations that you felt like Chief's deck was handling the situation better before he got Korgoth out. And sometimes you need to be prepared to switch your strategy. If Korgoth isn't working, just stop playing him. Like, he's done nothing, really, with the um, Snake Druid locking him down constantly. It might be better just to not play him. Very difficult to make that switch, though, when that's your whole kind of shtick. But sometimes you got to do that. Right, Mana Frenzy for Dark Crow. He's going to take this first in the best of three. And those mana pass really were just such a nightmare for Chief. Okay. That's our first game of the day. Right, let's get our scores correctly set up on the screen. Snake Druid, another card that's slated for a nerf in the next patch. And you could see how disgusting it was in that game. I think the change was to reduce its range, which I wouldn't really change too much in that, that match. Um, but yeah, some nice Mana Puff Madness. And I think that was just a, a good sort of deck interaction for, for Dark Crow in that match. It was awkward. For, um, for Chief to have to deal with those puffs and spawn defensively as well. Many things are going to be annoying. And I think that's... I think there were two reasons why uh, Chief had to make the decision to not play Korgoth in that match. His, firstly, his Korgoth wasn't doing anything really. It was getting shut down by the Snake Druid and that was it. And then secondly, when he was playing Korgoth then the mana puffs were just on the bridge for ages. So I feel like that's a situation where you've just got to respond to what your opponent's playing and say, look, my plan A is not going to work here. Let's just stick with plan B and see how we get on. But as I say, it's very difficult to make that choice. But uh, sometimes you just have to do that. Sometimes you're in a match and you could just feel that you need to keep pressure on the bridges. Um, and if, if you play, if you've got a big unit, you play it defensively, you try to build up your push, you know that you're going to give away those bridges, and you might never give them back. And never get them back. Right. Let's go into game two. Can Dark Crow close out this best of three? Oh, um, score. Make this entertaining, guys. Let's Fixed. Do right, here we go. Game two. Right, Apep. This time, Dark Crow is playing Korgoth. And Chief is playing a deck that has Monopuff Madness in it. Weird. It looks like Chief might have a super cheap deck with Watchers. He's burning mana for some reason, though. Right, so he puts the Watchers down. And then he gets the support behind it. But we've got a Boomer and a Reboomer. Both are going to get massive value. Those puffs live at the top as well. So that's not worked out well for Chief, unfortunately. We've got another Reboomer at the bottom. I assume that must have been from an Invoked card. Remember, the Invoke from, from Korgoth will change cards in your hand. Replace those Voidborn cards with one more valuable. Right. 
Not sure uh, how do we feel about this. Normally when you want to do Mana Puff Madness, you want to have a push going, or you want to have, you know, some kind of position on the field that makes it difficult for your opponents to, to kill the puffs. But he didn't really have that. A lot of a lot of bats being very annoying. Right, 1 minute 30, and we already have Korgoth ready to go for Darkrow. Okay, Korgoth's going to make good use of his Doom Hammer. Just murder these Watchers. Uh, not really sure about the chain. The chain before them all dying would have been good. Bloodums are going to get a little bit punished here. Remember, every time he gets a... Every time his attack gets at least one kill, Cogger, then he will invoke a card in his hand. You can see that the... Okay, so we got the Dragon Pack there in his fourth slot. That's invoked. That gets invoked again into a Doom Cleaver. A six mana Doom Cleaver. So this is going to be really painful. Those whelps doing massive damage. GG being dropped by Chief. And that cleaver, Doom Cleaver, finishes things off. And that's a pretty quick second game. 2 0 to Dark Crow. We saw Korgoth not working out for Chief, but working out very well for Dark Crow. And as we mentioned earlier, Dark Crow reigning champion. He is clearly enjoying things so far. Good start for him. Now, let's have a look what's going on elsewhere. Brackets linked in the uh, pinned comment, probably, if I did it right. So you can follow along from home. So Set's got a 2-0 win against Non-Existent. Death Shoot's got a 2-0 win against Lapoy. Sure how we say that. Destroyed's got a 2 0 win against Zen Weeb. Uh, has been beaten 2 0 by I Am Znart. And Yuxen has a win through a bye because of an odd number of players. So that looks like that's all of the games in the first round completed. So once those are locked in, we'll have our second round. Let's bring this up here if we can. Right, so that's been locked in. I think it just needs to validate. Normally what happens is that one of the players reports a result and then the other one has to agree that it's correct. There is a time as well, so if they don't agree, then it just auto goes through. Um, so we'll just wait for that to happen, and then we'll have our second round matches set up. Right, round two. So as mentioned before, the way Swiss rounds work is that the rounds will pair people based on their performance. So people that are winning will play other people that are winning. People that are not winning will play other people that are not winning. Uh, so round two is seeing Znart against Dark Crow, Zen against Destroy, Set against Death Shoot, Fickers against Lapoy, Zen Weeb against That Ain't It Chief, and Sentera against Non-Existent. See if we can get set up. I think we're going to see set against Disu. Um, I just need to. Okay. Uh, why? Oh, looks like that ain't it. Chief is playing a randoms match or something. Right, so let's see if we have here set against destroy set. No, I keep saying destroy Disu. Death shoot. You 
Now they did make an update to the friends list, so it is ordered better now. It's not perfect. And it can definitely be improved, but it's a lot easier to find people on your friends list now. I would love them to just fix the ordering a little bit because there's like people at the start. I don't know why they're at the start. We've got people without Beta Dwarf accounts at the start of the friends list. I don't know why they're there. Um, and one of the biggest improvements would be to allow it to be searchable. That would be actually massive. But it is ordered in some way now, so that does make it a lot easier to find people. You know, we'll take that when we get it. Right, so let's see if these players are online. Disu. Disu. I see set online. I think set's online at the moment. Set is located in Ukraine, and I know he messaged me yesterday. There's uh, been a lot of action close to where he is. Had some issues with his power. So fingers crossed he can stay online for the event. Stay safe, my friend. Right, so he's not online at the moment. But he is online on Discord, so that's a good sign. We should be able to get the bands from those players. Then we'll be good to go. So, if we think about the bands in that last game, like it made sense why uh, Chief banned Beam of Doom, right? Because he played that big Orgoth. But the Blood Imps, I feel like there was much better things you could ban than Blood Imps. Like Korgoth. But I'm sure there was some reasoning behind it. Right, where is our scores? Okay, so zero zero is going to be round two. So normally in these four or five rounds of Swiss, if you've got one loss, you've got a good chance of getting through to the top four. Any more than one loss, you're very unlikely to get through to the top four. So whilst a loss doesn't mean you're out, it does definitely hurt your chances and more than one loss could be fatal right bands we're awaiting as always one master and three cards that people can ban they normally do them in private so nobody gets the benefit of going second and reacting to the bands their original their their opponent's bands Right, Disu's online. Not seeing a set online at the moment. Okay, these are both experienced players, so they should have. Uh, they should know exactly what to do. Uh, so we're just waiting for the bands. Right, set still thinking about his bands. So, both of these are very good players, but I would say these are very different players. Set has a very set way of playing some very specific decks that he plays a lot. Whereas Disu is the kind of player that can play anything. He makes lots of interesting decks. 
And uh, he's one of those players that you can take a Disu deck and it is not necessarily easy to play. You'll see him high up on the leaderboard with a deck. You'll try it and you'll think, God, this feels awful. Um, but obviously in his hands, things are very different. Whereas other players, you can just copy their deck and it's it's super easy to play. I think dc has been playing sort of off meta stuff on the ladder to make it more difficult for himself. You know, just playing the most overpowered broken stuff. If you just want to get high up on the leaderboard, then that's going to work out for you. But if you if you want to sort of do well in the tournaments when things are banned and, you know, there's lots of different uh, variables, then just playing broken stuff is not going to help you too much there. Right. Do I have set as a friend? No. I would assume so, but I'm not seeing him here. Oh, there he is. Okay. Boom. He's online. Right. Okay. Hopefully we should have the bands momentarily. Then we can move on with our day. One thing, and we've spoken when I spoke to uh, Dark Crow before, I think. And this is something that we agreed on a little bit, is that I think Set doesn't ladder too much. I think he plays a lot of uh, practice games against people, which is great, but he doesn't ladder that much. And I wonder how much that hurts him overall. If at all, I don't know. Right, hopefully we've got the bands, and then hopefully, HOPEFULLY, we can have some gameplay. Sounds exciting. Right, if you just joined us, it's tournament time. Mini Masters, 1v1, $400 prize pool. Bands are coming through. Set against Disu. We're in the second round of the Swiss. Wouldn't be surprised to see either of these players in the grand final, but that's in a few hours' time for sure. But this will give us a good idea of who's likely to get there. Right, bands are in. Player one is set. Set has banned. And remember, when we talk about bands, you can ban based on the meta. You can ban on based on what's strong against your deck. Or if you're very familiar with your opponent and you know the kind of stuff they like to play, you can ban against them specifically. So Disu has banned King Puff, Sapphire Pebble, Brothers of the Void, which that feels like a very Disu directed ban and ATG drone. I feel like that's also a specific ban towards him as well. He did uh, Disu definitely had a King Puff ATG deck. We won't be seeing that here. Right, Sapphire Pebble, Brothers of the Void, ATG drone, and Disu has banned APEP. Um, Bounce Brief Flingers. Standard, Restless Dead, and Defenso Chopper. Okay. What do we make of those? 
Set's bands feel like they're very directed towards Disu, and Disu's bands feel like they're more generic, I guess. Bounce Breath Flingers, we've spoken about that at length. Restless Dead, that's uh, a decently strong card, especially in a Curse Dex. Give you that mana bank in. And Defenso Chopper, we know Defenso Chopper's very good against melee based decks. So that may give us an idea of what he's going to play. But yeah, we should be good to go now. We've got the bands. We know what's not being played. Let's find out what they are going to play. Isu definitely likes high skill masters. The owner, Wrecked, King Puff. These masters that have some mechanics that you need to master. Ladder is about winning a lot. Whether that is having a very high win rate with the strongest of decks or having an okay win rate but just playing a copious amount right here we go we're loading into the first game of this second round best of five three three didn't Master, say it get ready. right tronvir or oh, disu's got grandmaster in oh no i think you already had right set playing tronvir disu playing milloween Right, Set is playing a deck that will have Slithers in it. We can see the main part of the deck is going to be played around uh, Herald Our Moon. Thanks for the subs and the follows, guys. Great to have you here. Kinlap, it still bothers me that Kinlap's way smaller than it used to be. Cleaver's going to do a good job working through a Kinlap. A little bit of an XP lead for set here. Right, Snake Druid's going to be a little bit annoying. Is this going to get shut down? Cleaver might get a hit. No. Remember, Tronvir has that big knockback attack as well. Nice Shock Rock because it saves that bottom bridge. Right. Remember, uh, our moon does have that res. He's got that ball of light in his hand. That means his res is active. We learnt that, right? Slithers to res it. That's going to be a big res. Oh, he gets shut down there. That's a lot of damage, though, on Disu's face. Okay, Set will be pretty happy with this so far. Did a lot of damage. And... Uh, is there or thereabouts with the bridges. Milloween's Golem can't hit air anymore, which is very punishing in some situations. Now, those missiles are perfect for killing something annoying like the Snake Druid, but of course they can be blocked. So Set might have to keep that in mind, play it a little bit more defensively, try to get those missiles blocked, because that Snake Druid can be really annoying. Just locking things down, getting the XP. Cleaver's going to get another hit off. Getting quite a lot of poison. Slitherbounds do apply a lot of poison. But of course that poison does take a while to go down. A small XP lead for Disu. Needs to be careful. There's the res, but again, the missiles come in. I don't know. Okay, the, the golem just survives. It felt like he maybe pressured that, but he just used the golem as a tank there. But I think that worked out well. Disu does have a couple of useful spells to deal with our moon. 
Right. Okay, it looked like Set tried to block those missiles, but uh, our moon was too far forward. Okay, we're going to see some more phase damage here. Yes, we are. Pincer, but it reses. Needs to be DPS down. Okay, our moon still alive. And our moon down. Right, XP still level though. This is a close one. Blue has earned perk number three. Red gained perk three. Okay, so perk three is a big power spike for Tronvir. He doesn't have his perk three stone yet. He's got the wind rune, which he needs to cycle through, and then he'll be on to the next one. You might think that's just terrible using the blood imps there, but it's better that the cleaver hits the blood imps than hits face. Okay, that's a nice block. This is the push that he wants, really. He kind of wants Armun a little bit further back, but once these regroup here, could be okay. Keeping these units together is the power here. Right, Armun's going to be close to face. Slithers are up, so there is the potential res. The Slithers might die before the res. And they will. Okay. These two did a good job there killing the Slithers so there was no res from our moon. XP's still very close. Let me know if the music's too loud. Seems alright. Right, and then we see that big word stone with the taunt, with the damage, with the um, the ancestors plus the next buff is a unit with all of them and even if he doesn't kill him here he's going to be getting a lot of XP I don't think Disu can shut this down okay Set's going to take the first game from the looks of it Disu holding on Talakon face okay Set takes the first game the power of a Kinlap A lot of poison. I do like a Kinlap's gong effect with the poison, but there's not many opportunities you get where that's hugely valuable. And sometimes when you play randoms, your teammate gets the perfect gong opportunity and they never use it. Um, but working out there, our moon was always going to be problematic. And not too much face damage in um, pushes two to whatever, but that first push that Set did, did massive face damage. And that really changed uh, Deadshot's chances of winning for sure. Disu did do a very good job though at dealing with the Armoon. He had the pincer, which really helped. Being able to kill the Slithers before they can... He sacrificed as well, really important, but uh, unfortunately it didn't quite work out. But uh, that's only game one of this best of three. See what happens in game two. Our Moon is one of those cards that does catch some bands as we go through the event because of how strong and uh, annoying it can be to play. As mentioned before, losing this match does not necessarily mean that anybody is out of the event, but it does affect their chances. Losing twice is going to be too much, I should think. Losing once is going to be probably okay. But losing once will affect your seeding when we get to the top four. So, it turns out, winning is better than losing. Top tips from Fish. Okay, so the players will be deciding what to go with next. Whilst we're waiting, let's just remind ourselves of their bans. Let's 
So we've seen DC playing this Brothers of Void Diona on ladder, I think. So that's probably directed at that. As I mentioned, Disu does have a King Path ATG drone deck that's set clearly didn't want to play against. Sapphire Pebble just pretty damn strong overall. And then Disu banning Apep, always strong, flexible. Bounce Brief Flingers, strong in the meta. Restless Dead, meh, not sure. And Defenso Chopper. Penso Chopper's likely to just get value, right? The thing that makes Defenso Chopper strong is, well, one of the things is that it's just annoying to get, annoying to remove, and because of the way the bridges work, that uh, it can get you a lot of XP. You know, it might just slow a lot of things down, but the real value is the XP it gets. And remember, we may be having new bridge rules. Um, I'm not sure when they're supposed to be coming. But uh, that's something for the future. But for now, we're going to go into game Red two. Corner, are you ready? Blue corner, are you ready? Make this entertaining, guys. Let's duel! Right, set playing Tronvir again. Looks like he's playing the same deck. Disu playing something different. Yeah, Tronvir's not as strong as he was. I feel like Tronvir's stronger in duos than he is in solos. But Disu, as soon as he sees that Talek, probably knows that it's the same deck. There's Mini Akinlap at the bottom. Right. But DC does have some additional tools here, right? He's got Diona. And he has... Okay, that's huge. Shutting down a kin... Uh, sorry, um, our moon like that really takes the wind out of the push. So Diona's traps are going to help him deal with that. He's got Zip Zappinator in there as well. Well, I think Disu will feel more comfortable dealing with um, dealing with that threat. No bets at the moment. Right, and there we see Zip Zapnado. He's powered up twice. You can tell that he's got those two rings at the back that are lit up. That tells you that he's been charged twice. Is it weird that Talek doesn't do poison damage? Okay, Set has a decent XP lead now. And look at Disu just absolutely destroying with his trap and his spells. Okay, Trombic clears the top bridge with his rune. You can't take bridges with the runes, but you can take bridges with the ancestors that come from the ancestor rune. Set is ahead on XP though. The extra mana coming from Ruffles now, that's going to be nice for DC. Just needs to make sure he's got enough available mana. Now, in the, there's been a hotfix recently that fixed the issues with the mana bar bugging out. The fix, though, was to remove what is referred to as the pre-play system. So, as the game is now, you cannot play a card until you have enough mana. Which kind of makes sense, right? But in the old version, there was a pre-play system that gave you a little bit of a window. So you could play it a little bit earlier, and then the game would just sort of queue that up. And then when you had enough mana, it would play it for you. But that's what was bugging out uh, and causing the, the mana bar to lock up. So they've removed that as the fix. And depending on how you play, that may or may not affect you. I, I haven't really noticed it at all. But if you use that pre-play window, then it's uh, likely to have uh, be something that you noticed. That feature may come back. It was something that some people really struggled with, the bug. And I think it was down to latency. People's pings was affected. 
affecting whether they got the bug or not. Okay, Zip Zappinator doing a great job here. And I don't know if Disu just made the assumption that Set was going to play the same deck. We do know that's something he likes to do. But if he if he did make that assumption, then it's actually turned out very well for him. Because Herald's not really got across a bridge yet, I don't think. And as I mentioned before, one of the things with Set is he does like to play the same decks. He is quite predictable, and uh, this is what can happen if your opponent predicts what you're going to play. can be problematic. Not over yet, though. XP's still pretty close. Set is dropping low on HP, though. He needs to be careful with that. It's quite interesting. DC has countered Set's deck a lot, but is behind on XP. Okay. Set played into that at the top, right? I guess he was feeling a little bit brave. It's okay to play into those things if you have a plan. He did have a plan. Okay, XP leveling up. The Kinlip's kind of annoying to deal with because it's just so big and lumbering and stays on the bridge. Okay. That's just going to take a little while to clear this up, and XP is in Set's favor. not heard of the Resonating Blast Crystal doing the incorrect amount of damage. Should do 120 damage from the spell, and then 120 damage from each crystal. Okay, sets almost at Mana Frenzy, but Deadshot does have a good presence at the top. No, he does three on the second play. Right, both players have Mana Frenzy, but the bridges are red right now. The bridges are red. Sets at 63, 33, 3, none. 1-1. One, one. Okay. And that was interesting, because as I said, Disu did really counter Set's deck, but Set was able to really hold up in XP. The way the Resonating Blast Crystal works is the first time you drop, the first time you use the spell, it does 120 damage and drops a crystal. The next time you use the spell, it does 120 damage and then explodes each of the other crystals for 120. So it does three lots of 120 the second time. Okay, one all. Is Set going to switch? He's got to, right? I find the disconnection thing weird because some people really struggle with it and other people don't get it at all. Like, I very, very... I can play for, for hours and hours and hours without disconnecting. Other people say they disconnect five times an hour. But I know the devs did recently release a hotfix that improved the login. So, if you are disconnecting... Please give the devs your logs. Or send them to me and I'll send them to them. They are trying to get to the bottom of it. Okay, so 1-1 one, one here. 
Set took the first game. And Disu have taken the second game. So that's 1-1. One, one. Best of three, so that's first to two. Both players are at one. So whoever gets the next one is going to increase their score from one to two. And then they'll be the winner. Rowling's got all his ducks in a row. Right, looks like we're going into the third game. Here we go. What's up, Hatchy? Masters, get ready. The fight is on. Okay, set's done it. He's stuck with the same Tronvir deck. And it looks like Disu's stuck with the same Diona deck that countered the Tronvir deck. But it was very close. It's kind of weird though, because you, if you think, if you say, oh, someone countered my deck, you feel like... That would mean you would get destroyed. But that last game was really, really close. Even though Disu had all the counters for it. Felic does double damage against stunned or poisoned targets. That was big. Okay. Oh, it's the... Oh... Uh, uh, I don't know. I'd use the chain there. I feel like the chain could have given him the opportunity to get a good slap out. But it was expensive. So Set just needs to hope that even though his Akinlep is going to... Not his Akinlep, sorry. I keep saying that wrong. His... Uh, his Armoon is going to get pretty shut down and countered. He's, he needs to hope that it just takes enough time for that to happen, that he gets some value from the, the bridges from it. Zenweep says it's a hardware issue. Uh, based on what? Yeah, the spells being invisible is a known issue. What's not known is the, the cause of it, unfortunately. But here we go, putting the trap down, trying to get the damage out. There it goes. Okay. Big, 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 big. He's blood emptying the aggro down and then not take the top bridge. That you just using his trap at the top to slow everything down. Remember, he's getting XP whilst the bridges are red. My right, tranquil's gonna survive this, heal up nicely. XP lead for D suit. Set again taken a lot of face damage. Right, traps out. Look at that trap. It's like locked on immediately to a Kinlap. A Kinlap reses. Okay. So Kinlap has rezzed. Remember, you can tell that because he doesn't have the, the circle in his hand. The, the 3D circle, sphere, if you want to. We learned that during a tournament. Okay, so a Kinlap getting some value there. And obviously when I say Akinlap, I mean Armoon, because I literally can't say the right thing. Right. The res has happened, so it won't last much longer. In fact, it is dead. I'm sure the structure of that tower is starting to crumble a little bit. Blue's gonna have to go all out on this. Again, Set's taken so much face damage. 
And now he's be quite behind on XP as well. This is not looking good. Set really rolled the dice with playing this deck three times in a row, especially after getting countered a lot. They've double trap are going to absolutely shred. And Deadshot's been on point with those traps. The traps do have a small amount of summoning sickness, so you can, if you're quick, pick up the aggro and try to save your important units, but Set hasn't been in a position or able to do that. Okay, try to spin it around with the trap. Didn't quite work out, but these traps are just going to hold everything away from the top bridge. Okay, that frost shield should help him at the top. Okay. Okay. Decent push at the top. Still had the res available. Could do some good damage here. Is Disu going to be in a little bit of trouble? Is Disu going to be in a little bit of trouble? He was being controlling this game, but suddenly a good push is coming out. And set. He's going to take this 2-1. Okay. Set was brave to use that same deck again and somehow managed to win that. Disu did a great job shutting down the Armoon over and over again, but then that last Armoon didn't get the insta shutdown treatment, and you could just see how much value it got. Right. Brave from set. Maybe he felt like he should have won that second game. He just didn't quite play it correctly. But it felt like in the, the third game, it felt like Disu shut down the Armoon even harder than in the original game. Apart from that last one. In game two, the Armoon got a lot of value on its first spawn. In game three, it got a lot of value on its last spawn. Okay. Whew. So that, that's, I think, the last game of the round. Have a little looky, looky loo. Okay, so round three. Set against Dark Row, Destroy against Snart, Zentera against Chief, Zen against Disu, Ficus against Zen Weeb, Lepoi against Non Existence, Zistant. Um, who shall we watch? Set against Dark Row would be a good game, but those will probably be seen later in the event, maybe. Um, both of those are on zero losses, so whoever loses this will be on one loss, but still go through. It will likely change the seeding. Not 100% sure, but uh, likely. Um... Good morning. I think we're going to do destroy against I am Znart. Um, destroy, very good player, experienced player, tournament ladder. Not sure about Znart, but we'll find out. I'd have to look at the end of that game again to see if Disu messed up or not. Um, he did use double crossbow traps on the previous Armoon, which, I, I don't know, that was a great shutdown, but it might have been just using all of his traps at once when he didn't need to. 
And then that left him underhanded for the next one. Um, not sure. But remember, uh, the uh, the VOD and will be up on YouTube tomorrow. So if you want to drop a sub and then follow along on the watch any stuff you may have missed, then I will allow it. I'll be doing my meta for this season soon as well. So if you want to check in on that in a few days, we should have the meta. See what's strongest overall in our Minion Masters meta review. Mmm. We can either do MMM, Minion Masters meta, which is mmm. Or Minion Masters meta review, which is mmm. Ah. Let me know. What's your favourite? Probably hate them both. Okay, so, round three. Destroy. And I am smart. Okay, let's see if we've got these players on our friends list. Destroy offline though. That could be fixed. Not sure if we have start. So remember the Mini Masters now runs on the Beta Dwarf friend system. So that means cross platform friends. So Xbox players, PC players, and eventually mobile players can play together, which is really nice. Uh, and they can also take part in the tournaments as well. I don't know if we've had Xbox players in the tournament, but uh, they can join. But that is one of the big pluses the 2.0 that new feature I want to see if I have these players at right doesn't look like it well it's not anyway Right, band's coming in. In just one moment. Okay, so Destroy has banned a pep. Bouncebury Flingers. A regular Woodsman. And Ardera. Uh, which is High Inquisitor Ardera, okay. Uh, Woodsman, I mean, it's not a strange ban. I just feel like we haven't seen many just flat-out Woodsman bans. Mmm. Ah. Uh. And Snart's bans are... Apep. Okay, Jin Long. So we had that discussion about how Jin Long is so strong and never really gets banned but now it has got a ban Saber Tosser and maybe off the back of that last game Herald our Moon okay let's try and get this friend request sorted
Okay, there we go. Yeah. We good. Okay, snart set up. Roy set up. Okay. Yeah, the current meta is to abuse the Storm Tamer bug, especially in 2v2s. Hopefully that'll be fixed soon. I wish they had an easy way to just disable cards rather than having to put out a hotfix. Okay, did we do everything that we need to do? I think so. Hmm. Ah. Oh. Right, destroy. It's not. Okay, we're good. I'm ready. Are you ready? Well, let's just, if we have a quick second, let's just have a look at the standings. So, um. The Snarts won one and lost one. Destroy has won two. So if Snart loses this, they're probably out of the event. Destroy hasn't lost yet, so... Um, he is still very much in contention. Wouldn't be surprised if he gets to the top four. Did we see a, a timer message for a giveaway in the chat yet? Have a look. Should be on. Start the giveaway properly. Right, sorry for the slight delay, but we should be ready to go almost immediately. Like based on nothing. But yeah, I'm ready to go. We're just waiting for the players to uh, hit the play button. But no APEP for either player. All other masters are available. Got your name wrong. Who did? I did. Oh, sorry. My bad. Oh, I did. I fixed it, but I fixed it wrong. Right, sounds like we're going into the game. Here we go. Destroy against I am Snart. Round three, best of three. Of the minions of masters, prepare to duel. Masters, get dueling. Right, destroy Volko. I am Snart. Diona. Looks like it's going to be Reckonator, probably with Zeppelins. Lots of scrats. The first right, let's see how he deals with the Reckonator at the top. Volko's going to help clear the AoE, his AoE attack. It's going to be some decent damage, I think. The brother getting hung up on all the little scrats, which is problematic. In comes the Zeppelins. We've seen Memphisto play this deck in the past. We've seen how strong that is. And this could be just over with this big one push. I'm sure the structure of that tower is starting to crumble. Destroy is going to take a lot of damage. Volko can't hit air, of course. Okay, Destroy. Is he going to survive this? The bats need to help him. Jolo's coming in. It's over. Okay. Red is victorious. Go, boy. Goodness me. And that is... A big push. I think... 
destroy Needy to get the, uh, the shield guard onto the Reckonator. It was just wasted on all the scrats, really. Right. Okay. <laughs> that deck's definitely hard to defend against, especially with Volko not being able to hit the air. So let's see if Snart plays the same deck and see if Destroy can counter it. Definitely remember Memphisto playing a similar deck in events quite a while ago, but we, we've seen them splattered in and out of these events. They always do pretty well. Destroy probably needs to play a Divenso Jobber in the next game. Needs a spell to clear all of those uh, Zeppelins as well, probably. Let's see what he decides to do. You get pretty high ranked with decks like that because they have a decent win rate and when they win, they win really fast. So you just crush through the ladder. probably thinking about how he's going to deal with that. Basically, you just push with the Reckonator. Your opponent puts something down to deal with it. Then you use your Scrutillary. Then you send in your Flyby. Very straightforward, but very powerful. Yesterday I was testing out some of the new cards that are coming up. You know, the, the upcoming expansions. There's some cool stuff coming, let me tell you that. Some cool stuff. A okay, little bit of downtime. But the queue for this match is going to be longer than the last match. The 
Let's see if Sonata plays the same deck again. If he's playing the same deck over and over, that'll be interesting to see if people ban it against him, and then how he reacts to that. checking that I've still got my spectate up so we're not missing anything. So if you guys had to counter that deck, what would you play? What would be your key cards to deal with that? I think Destroy not getting the brother on the Reckonator was a problem. Get the brother on the Reckonator, use the Shield of Light to clear whatever scratch you can. Right, here we go! Right, let's see what happens. Does Destroy build a counter to it? Does Snart play something different? We don't know, but we're about to find out. Literally seconds away. Masters, get ready! Go. Let the fight commence. Indeed, Snart's playing the same deck. Let's see what Destroy plays. Okay, chain, clear the sniper, keep the pressure on there, give some XP. But Sonata's not likely to be too worried about XP. He just wants this big disgusting push. Assume it's the same deck. We haven't seen the Reckonator yet, but one assumes we will. It might just be Scrap Power. Okay, the Reckonator's there, but it's right at the bottom of his deck. Okay, not the best Scratillery. He doesn't clear everything there. This looks like it's going to go longer than the previous game. Right, Chisma in the pocket. I'm going to take some damage here. Reckonator and the Chisma will clear it up, but he's taking damage as it happens. But he's more... You know, he wants to just clear this up, not have any damage on his units, and then do this counter push. Spirited Scott... I'm not sure about Scotty going down the bottom there, though. Looks like Scotty would be great at shutting down this push at the top. Okay, we're probably going to see a Scrotillery. There it is. Oh, this is going to be a mistake, I think. Oh, Chisma! Oh, Destroy's messed that up, I think. He's going to survive this, though. Chisma's really awkward to deal with when it has that constant attacking with the Scrat Swarm bonus. Okay, here comes the next push. A Beam of Doom would be nice around about now. Gonna be a lot of damage as well. Reckonator's gonna explode. I don't know how Destroy deals with this. It's gonna be 2-0. Oh, I feel like he needed would. better spells. A big beam of doom, vortex, daggerfall, something that could clear a lot of the little stuffs as well. Just didn't have those. There was also occasions where like Scotty was down the bottom. He really would have been great at dealing with the Reckonator at the top. Okay. So 2-0. The question is, is that Snart's only deck? Does he have a plan B if that's banned? Right.
Okay. Yep, that is the one of the cards for the next season. I don't know if they've announced a name, but they have put it in the public PTR, so that's probably right. And I was just here to steal decks. We all are. Right. So that was pretty quick. Bit of a delay between the matches, but the matches themselves are pretty quick. Um, so let's have a look at the brackets. So set against Dark Crow. Um, looks like that's going on. Let's see if we can jump in there, see what's uh, occurring. Set this up quickly. Crow dark dark, 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 crow. Right. Have a look. I don't know what the score is. I don't know if they're in a match. Okay. Uh, where's my window? Okay, score un unconfirmed. Confirm it in a minute. Right, XP lead for Set. Dark Crow taking a lot of damage here. Looks like it's going to be over. Set's going to take this. What's the score? Who, been, who knows? Who knows? Looks like Set may be playing the same deck as we saw before with King Puff. Okay, uh, so we just caught the end of that. Let's see if we can... Okay, it doesn't look like anything's been reported for that game yet. So they either started late or didn't report anything. Find out. Players are encouraged to report each game as they go, so we can see exactly what's going on. But it doesn't always work out like that. Just update the players. See if we get another game. Uh, Dionis for the traps. The Torn Trap just helps you keep that push going. Ratbo doesn't really help you much in that situation. You're not interested really in Dakarin. We're trying to win before that happens. Okay, it's one game all. It's good, we get a, an extra game. Right, set, dark row, 1-1. One, one. I'll try and find the bands if I can. So both of these players unbeaten so far. Okay, so set band Tronvir, Kabatos, a blue golem, sapphire, pebble, dark row band, Tronvir, Armoon, Ardera, and Zeppelin. Don't know if I'm gonna set the bands up properly because by the time I've done it, we'll probably be in a game where we don't see it. Both players ban Tronvir. Set banning Cabotosser, Blue Golem, Sapphire Pebble, and Dark Row banning Herald R Moon. We saw that a lot against Disu. Playing Quister Ardera and Zeppelin.
These players have definitely played against each other a lot. Right, here we go. This is the final game in this best of three. We join it late, Master, but it's 1-1. One, one. to get your minion on. Oh, wait, that didn't come out right. Let's fight! Okay, Set looks like he might be playing the same deck. Not the same, it's a little bit different. It looks similar, though. Darkrow, King Puff. Hypnotize is a card that's had a lot of attention this season. Definitely seen it at the top of the leaderboard. Looks like he's going to get nerfed in the next patch as well. That's what happens. You raise your head You'll above that parapet. Going to take a shot to the eye. The set running both, which we didn't see him running before. Bridge switch to grab the bridges. Don't tell Set, but Darkrow has a red golem there. Blood Imp's not really going to get punished. Set looks like he's burning a little bit of mana, wants to play defensively. Blood Imp's are not going to be great. I think they're going to die and not take a bridge. Oof. Okay, uh, do we like that Hypnotize? Uh, not really. Talic dies. Talic. Right, XP lead for set here. Darkrow would love to take some damage to get that red golem out. And he's dropped to half health or less. Blue has obtained perk number two. Right, perk two for KP. Gets those night puffs. Right, big chain, keep the pressure on. You see those red orbs going to the Master Tower. That's blood pack damage coming from those blood imps. 75% of damage they take goes back to the Master now, something like that. Okay, Hypnotize just to be annoying here, really. Good XP lead for set. We know Perk 3 KP is strong, but both players will get that. But of course, in a mirror match, it's very important who gets there first. Whoever gets... Perk 3 first gets a big night puff generation. That can change things a lot. Right, Darkrow's not too far away from that 1500 HP. Uh, blood it. Uh, uh, red Golem. I can talk. No, again, not a great hypnotize. Didn't stop the bridge being taken. Okay. Right, Red Golem. It's going to be Raged as well. I'm sure he's going to play it now. I'm sure he's going to play it on that Rage. He needs to be careful against... The Bolf, I guess. But he's got the Giant Growth as well. He's going to be frozen for a little bit, but... I mean, it's huge anyway, right? Oh, that's a great chain, though. Okay, it's going to get shut down pretty quickly with that. Okay, Set, I don't think we'll be too unhappy with how that worked out. That Red Golem is basically... I mean, you say it's basically dead, but it can still be an absolute brute. Oh, he shuts down those scrats because he doesn't want the Night Puffs to be generated. Hypnotize! Oh, that's a great Hypnotize! Kept the Red Golem alive to get a big hit off the bolt. That's huge. Red Golem goes down. Set's still ahead on XP, but he's going to be defending here. Wants to get on the bridges... Get those night puffs. Both players have a bridge switch available. Got to be careful in the mirror match. You don't want to switch and then get your switch unswitched. Okay, they both did it at exactly the same time. Looks like Set did it just a tiny bit later, though, as his night puffs weren't stunned. This golem is going to snap a kinlap at the bottom there. Darkrow keeps playing those Blood Imps, and we've seen many times in the past how he plays the Blood Imps until he should probably stop and then play one more time. So let's see how that works out. Still XP the set at the moment. Bridge switches are about 
next to each other in the cycle. Set having to bridge switch and not really get any night puffs there. That's going to be unfortunate. And this is going to be a lot of pressure from this red golem because this, he's got two up now. The first one didn't do anything. The second one's going to do more. The third one's going to probably be disgusting. XP almost leveling up. Dark Crow low on HP. Can't use those Blood Imps anymore. But set very low on HP at the moment. I think he's going to die. Oh, he's still alive. But the next push is going to kill him for sure. 13 HP. Dark Crow takes that. Two games to one. And that red golem changed everything. Okay. So... That means that Darkrow takes that by two games to one, inflicts Set's first defeat of the day. Can still qualify for the elimination, though. So that's probably going to be the last game of that round. Let's dive in and have a little looky. Okay, so as we saw there, Dark Crow beating set two games to one. I pressed the back button when I didn't want to, and now we have to reload the page. But it's okay. Everyone relax. Okay, we saw Destroy being beaten by Snart. Chief beating Sentera 2 0. Disu beating Yuxen 2 0. Vickers beating Zen Weeb 2 0. And Lapoy beating non existent 2 0. Okay, so those are the matches completed for round three, which means we're going to round four, which is the final round of the Swiss part of the event. And that will, once that round's completed, we'll have our top four. So, top four is going to be decided after this round. So, round four is Snart against Chief, Destroy against Set, Dark Crow against Disu, Ficus against Zen, Sentera against Lapoy, Non Existent against Zen Weeb. But, let's look at the standings. Okay, so Darkrow unbeaten. We got Snart 2-1, Set 2-1, Chief 2-1, Disu 2-1, Destroy 2-1, Ficus 2-1. So that's the top seven. But we need to whittle it down to four. Let's see if we can find a match that has a lot riding on it. Right, so let's have a look here. Where's my other browser? There it is. Okay. okay, so let's have a look. Disu is playing Dark Crow. Uh, Dark Crow is probably qualified. Wait, where is the other browser? Not tab to it. Kind of annoying. Okay, we can do this though. Right, okay. I'll just be here talking to myself if you need me, right? Set against Destroy. Uh, set is on one loss. Destroy is on one loss. Um, and we've got Chief against Snart. Snart is on one loss. Chief is on one loss. Hmm. Okay. Um... Thea, thanks for the raid. Welcome, raiders. Come on in.
Right, let's just figure out where we're going to go. Okay, we're going to see set against destroy. Winner likely goes through to the top four. Loser likely goes out. Right. Get set up for that. Right, zero, zero. Round four. This is the final round of Swiss. Get the band set up. Okay. Set against destroy. Winner goes through, loser goes out, probably. Good job, Anno. Good job. I am intrigued to see if Zanar plays that same deck or if it gets banned against Chief. We'll see if we can find that out for you. Right, so as always, the players can ban one master and three cards to prevent their opponent from playing those, and their opponent has the power back at them. The bans are generally done in private, so nobody gets the benefit of going second. Thanks, Anno. Right. Next up is... What's up, James? Okay. Um, hmm. Who did I put as player one? Player one is set. Okay. Bands. Do we have the bands on the screen? Yes, we do. Right. Set bands. Volko, which I think Destroy likes to play a lot. Um, okay, so big bands. High Inquisitor Ardera. Herald R Moon. And Red Golem. He's still hurting after that last game. Destroy banning Apep. Bounce free flingers. High Inquisitor Ardera. And Herald. Harold our moon. Right. Let's just make sure we got that right. So Volko for set. Red Golem. Ardera and Herald our Moon and destroy Apep, Herald, Ardera and Flinger. Ardera cops a lot of bans in the events, but it has no balance changes on the way. I don't know. Why do we see why why is that a thing? I don't know. What did a stat show? Who knows? Right, if you just joined us, this is the fourth round. It's set against destroy. Winner will go through to the top four. Loser will very likely go out. Both players have lost a game so far. Snart beating destroy and Darkrow beating set. Darkrow reigning champion. Set reigning runner-up. That's a thing. Okay, set, destroy should be good to go for this one. Right. As always, if you missed any of the action or want to revisit it, the VOD will be up on YouTube tomorrow. I'll put timestamps in it so you can easily find the matches. So you can just skip through to the matches or skip through to specific matches, if that's what floats your boat.
<gasps> Gameplay time! Okay, uh, the bans for the Znart match. Chief did not ban anything that would affect Znart's deck. Guess he didn't watch the stream. Minion Masters! Let's get this duel started! Okay, here we Let's go! Right, set. Tronvir playing the same deck again from the looks of it. And Destroy playing Sniper Mordor. I love to see it. But I don't think it's particularly strong. Let's see how it works out. The snipers could be great against a Kinlap. No, I keep saying a Kinlap. Our moon. Did he ban our moon? Our moon destroy. Okay, Herald is banned. So let's see how that changes Set's deck. Right, Chain Lightning's going to be good here, but it won't kill the Bounty Sniper because of the shield. That's the beauty of the Bounty Sniper. And if you look closely, he's got a Bridge Shrine on his back. Red has obtained the first perk. Okay, these Sniper decks do struggle early, as we're seeing here. Let's see if he can get some pressure going. Bounty Sniper revives. Really wants to keep that bad boy alive if he can. That could be crucial to his success here. Blue's obtained perk number two. Mm. Tombstone goes down, chain comes in. Red is starting to feel the heat. These sniper decks just so susceptible to any sort of ranged removal. I think there's a sniper hidden behind my face. Are you there? I'm surprised I haven't seen some spirit sniper decks, because remember they changed spirits to give at least 100 extra HP. down that would have been a good res. Was it Kinlap on the other team? I don't know. It's losing my mind. Chain so strong against Mordor of course. Shuts down the Mordor attack with the stun. Resets it. Same with the tombstone. Feels like with set spells and the runes from Tronvir, the snipers really just don't stand much of a chance. Let's see if we can make something happen here. Shen just getting absolutely murdered, unfortunately. And the chain finishing that off. I love Sniper Mordor. When it works, it's fun. Sniper Mordor. Deep into... Um, Mana Frenzy. Oof. Those are the times. I've got some good videos on my YouTube of that, I think. That was many, many, many seasons ago. Okay, that felt like Set was playing a very strong deck and Destroy was playing a deck. Very difficult to keep those snipers alive against the owner, Tronvir. And players with any spells in their decks. 
I feel like you need shields. You need black hole, maybe. Not sure. Might just not work in the meta. Because the problem is, it's really weak early. Snipers take ages to kill anything. And in this meta, with all these big, heavy units pushing you, the snipers really just cannot put out the DPS they need. When you have loads of snipers, you want to spread them out so they don't get hit by a spell. But when you've got so many of them, you just cannot find room to keep them apart. I'm not a fan of Sniper Squad because they just both die, always die together. Set likes to play a damn snow arena for some reason, I think. Okay, so Set's probably going to play the same deck, let's be honest, right? What's Destroy going to do? Yeah, they fixed the Frostbearer's aura briefly. Like, I have seen it. But it's it's not around very much. Add it to the list. Snipers are generally one of those strats that are either just weak or way too strong. There's not too much middle ground. They either die to the removal spells or they don't. And the difference between that is basically night and day. Right, game two. Set's probably going to play the same thing. Destroy. Who knows what Destroy is going to bring. Masters of minions and minions of masters. Prepare to duel. Commence throwing creatures at each other. Okay, yep. Set playing the same thing. No R Moon, of course, though. Destroy playing Tromvir as well. And he has the Void Altar. Void Altar is kind of one of those win more cards, right? You've got to use it when you're in a good position. What he'll likely try and do is try to get some reductions on it with the Doom Cleaver. So he ends up getting it nice and cheap. And then use that at, at the right time, at the crucial time, to get a good push gun. Let him keep that top bridge. Okay. Doom Cleaver's going to get some value here. It's going to take a little while to kill all this, though. Remember, you want the Doom Cleaver getting kills. You don't, it's not ideal hitting a target multiple times. It's only got one reduction there. A nice knockback with Trombeer's attack, picked up by the Snake Druid. You get another couple of reductions, so that's a four mana Void Altar waiting in the wings. He's got to use it at the right time. If he uses it and doesn't get a chance to pick everything up, then that's going to be a problem. There you see the aura. It's there. The Curse Bearer's aura. It's gone. Okay, we saw it. Curse Bearer getting aggro back down is kind of helpful to destroy. It's going to assist at the bottom here a little bit. It's quite helpful, actually, that it got knocked back, so it's not going to get aggro, so it's going to stay a while and maybe get another Frost or a Frozen situation out. That actually worked out pretty well. It goes down now. 
Curse Bearer's not cursing everything yet. Okay, Doom Cleaver, kill the Akinla. It gets it. Doesn't want to get too much poison on the Doom Cleaver, though. Okay, Doom Cleaver's going to get a couple of kills here. So that's a two mana Void Altar. But Set has a big XP lead and has done a lot of face damage to destroy. A couple of heal puffs popping off at the bottom as well. One mana Void Altar. Got to do it soon, surely. Okay. Right. Does get... Okay, does he just die to that push on his face? I think so. Okay, another... Off meta deck, really, there for destroy. It was a good plan, didn't quite work out. Tronvir, decent for picking up that with the um, the ancestor rune. Okay, so set takes that 2 0. But he's going to be into the top four, I assume. It's raining a lot here. Okay. Okay, so Zanar beating Chief. Two games to one. Chief took the first game, but not the second two. We got... Disu against Dark Crow. Looks like it's in game two. Ikus has beaten Sen 2 0. Sentera won two games to one. Okay. Let's see if we can drop into the Dark Crow Disu match. Let's see what's going on there. It just sound like a match ended. Thanks for tuning into the Caesar Network, sponsored in part by Bram Flakes. Okay, score unconfirmed. Right, Milloween. Red has obtained their first perk. The Dark Crow, DC playing King Path. Blue unlocks their first perk. We saw the HEG drone banned by set against these who I think. Not this time. Not sure about that impetus. Oh god. The message <laughs> in the wrong chat. Okay, uh. Delete those. Fix my mistake. Could be 1 0 to DC. Depends. If it's GM22, then it's number 22 overall. Otherwise, I have no clue. Not very high. Blue just got the second perk. Red obtained perk number two. Nice bridge switch. Here comes a nice Hypno. Boom. Okay. Good value Hypno there. 
your AoE is now my AoE. Seems like Hypno's been under the radar for quite a while. Okay, Iron Grenade really shutting down the spawner. Often the power of the spawner is that it just puts pressure on a bridge for a long period of time. Okay, Spirited Golem and the King buff. These two taking damage, but health, as always, is a resource. Does he get any... Okay, no spawners swarm. That's huge. No spawners swarm. No swarmers spawn. Nailed it. Again. Oh, that's a beautiful bridge switch. And that's a mistake from Dark Crow. You should never really put a spell like that on the bridge when your opponent is King Puff. Because they can just move around it. Bit of a mistake from Dark Crow. That's going to be painful. Dissu did use his bridge switch, but does have another one in 10 seconds. And if he can get some good night puffs out, then that could be all she wrote. Huge ATG drone value there. Here we go, bridge switch, night puffs at the top, ATG drone as well to support it. Both bridges for, for Dissu at the moment. His perk 3 should allow him to take over this game, I think. Not again, a great Hypno. Kills the Night Puffs, but not really much else. Next bridge switch coming in four seconds as well. If he gets that off, that's going to be huge. That Golem's going to absolutely destroy that Defenso Chopper. Okay, Deadshot doesn't have any Horde at the moment. Here it comes. Bridge switch, boom, night puffs. Okay, yeah, use the call to arms on the sapphire pebble there from the looks of it. Red's been putting up a fight, but I don't think it'll be enough. Both players have taken a lot of face damage. A lot of face damage on Disu at the moment, blocking those missiles. Disu needs to be careful here. Does have a good XP lead though, so if he can get just hold one bridge now, he's likely to get to Mana Frenzy first. There's a bridge switch, gets a bit of Night Puff action. Well, he's going to clear this bottom bridge from the looks of it. ATG Drone survives as well. That's annoying for Dark Crow. 10 XP left for D Su to get to his Mana Frenzy. I think this is pretty much it. Looks like Dark Crow can't clear this up and get pressure on the bridges quickly enough. Right, Mana Frenzy for Disu. Red team. Bridge switch coming. Night puffs. ATG drone ruling the skies. This is just going to become way too much. Okay, Disu's going to take this game, but we just need to confirm what the score is overall. I mean, Dark Crow's still alive, but surely he can't hold on. Base damage from the Iron Grenade available as well. I mean, he could end this here, right? Right, there we go. Disu takes it. Okay, let's see if we can double check the score. Hey, Jessica.
Good morning. Okay, let's see what the website says. The website says that Dizu won the first game. We saw him win that game, so should be 2-0, right? see what happens so it's not beat chief destroy lost to set dark crow lost to disu Ficus beat zen centera beat lapoy and zen we beat non-existent so we should be almost at a point where we can see our top four it was a close game but it felt like disu always had the XP lead, the Mana Frenzy, and the ability to close it out. The ATG drone ruling the sky. Not too many options for Dark Crow to shut that down. Wasn't a fan of the Hypnotize in that match. Didn't get too much value many times, especially when he played it on the bridge and it got switched away. Okay, so it's 2 0 to Dark to uh, Disu, pretty sure. Okay, we just need to wait for that to lock in, and then we'll have our overall complete standings. All right, I'm just going to take a quick break whilst we're waiting for that to lock in, and then when I get back, we'll have our top four shootout! Bam! BRB. Right. As you can see, I have returned. Let's see what I missed. Right. So, let's have a look at the top four. As always, the tiebreakers are... A little confusing. But let's see if we can unpack them. So we're seeing Dark Crow's Not, Disu, and Set as our top four at the moment. But please wait before we lock that in. So, reminder with the tiebreakers, the first thing we look at is their points, their Swiss score, which is based on the number of wins they've got. Three points for a win. Okay, the second tiebreaker is the opponent's set win rate. So, that's how strong their opponents are. 
Then the next tiebreaker, if, if that's all level, is the, the opponent's opponent set win rate. So how strong their opponent's opponents were, to give you an idea of how impactful their opponent's wins were. And then overall game win percentage. Then head to head. And then total sets one. Only go to the next one if it's all equal. We're just trying to figure out if everything is correct. So we're seeing Set and Thick as 4th and 5th at the moment. They are separated by the opponent's set win percentage. We might switch things up a bit. Hold Fire. Okay, so it looks like we're going to switch things up a little bit and we're going to do a top eight instead of a top four. But let's see if Sonobi can weave that into the system. So we get extra gameplay. Let's do a cheer and clapping. Yeah. So that should be Dark Rose Nart, Disu, Set, Ficus, Chief, Destroy, Sentera, Ex and that's it. It's ahead is I assume you played each other. But, but like played like who though, right? <laughs> Does that mean like Head to head. I don't know. I'm not sure actually. That's a good point. Head to head against who? Is it against like the person below you? Like that's the only way it would work out, right? Because like everything is against the person below you. So like Dark Row, head to head. Like Disu against head to head one. Yeah, it must be against the person you're tied with, yeah. Because like all of the things are against that, right? Is that the number of times you beat them, the number of games? I don't know. The chances are that the head to head doesn't get used as the tie break because there's three other things before that, plus the points as the, the tie break. Right, so nobody's just setting things up. And then we'll figure out where we're going to go. Feels like the the first tie break after the Swiss points is always the thing that makes the difference. Right, there we go. Snobby's done his magic. We've got a top eight. Dark Crow. So the the 
players positioning should equal their seeding so we should have dark crow as the first uh, qualifier against centera as the final qualifier snart against destroy destroy will be happy with that disu against chief and set against vicus right so we're going to move to a top eight so we get an extra round that probably means we'll only see maybe one plus a bit more of another maybe match uh but remember these are all best of five now and conquest rules so if you win with a master you can't play that master anymore you can of course play the same deck we've never put any restrictions against that but the master has to be different spicy yes correct very spicy. Things are about to get hot in here. It's actually quite hot in here. I'm going to get a drink and then we'll uh, move on. What do you guys think of the new Pepsi logo? <laughs> okay. Right, standings overview. Brackets. Right, let's go to brackets, and then we should have a top eight bracket. Okay, so Dark Crow, Sentera, set against Fickers, Snart against Destroy, Disu against That Ain't It Chief. We got through these first four rounds pretty quickly, though, didn't we? Let's zoom this in. Um, I think it would be fun to watch I'm Snart against Destroy. See how that goes. One assumes we'll see some different bands. Let's just double check that's going to be okay. Well, we could have either done an extra round of Swiss that would have been best of three, or we go into the eliminations, which I think we're going to do best of five.
Pepsis. Right, so let's do Iron's Not against Destroy. We saw them earlier. Let's see if we get anything different this time. One assumes the bands will be different. But who knows? Isn't that the old Pepsi logo? No. Negative. Maybe it's the new one, but it like references an old one or something. Now I have to show you the correct one. That's an advert. You go. Old one on the left, new one on the right. This one's got the extra bits because it's the cherry one. I kind of like the new one. I'm not going to lie. Mm. Sorry, I just hurt my ankle. This is a bit misleading though because the the icon on the right is actually bigger than the can itself which is not how it is in real life it's, it's not hanging over the edge not, not just a badge pinned to the front of it right anyway quarter final time snot against destroy we saw them earlier snot played the uh reckonator zeppelin scrutillary barrage deck Let's see if uh, we get some bands against that, or some tech against it. What would you guys play if you had to counter that? If you knew you were playing a match against your opponent who's going to play the Reconator, the Scrutillary, the Zeppelins, etc. What would you play to deal with it? Need some DPS to get through that Reconator. Maybe Defenso would be good. So shut that down and kill all the scrats. I feel like you need a spell to just murder everything in the air. Oh god, I burped and it came out my nose. Oh, that was... As I was drinking it, I had a burp that came out my nose. That was... <sighs> that made my eyes water. Oh, do I have a Pepsi shirt on? I do have a Pepsi shirt on. It's the old logo, though. This is a very old logo, though. Oh, look, this is the very old logo, but it's the new logo. Very exciting. Now I want to look back at the history of the logos. It's, it is like going back to the old logo, right? It's like a new version of the old logo. Nothing's new. Nothing's ever new. Right. So... Where's my cursor? Oh. Okay, bands are in! Who's player one? I think Snart's player one this time. Yes, right. Bands are in. This could be crucial. Right, it's not as banning Morelia. Trying to get it in order of Spence, Chain Lightning, Shield Guard, which we saw earlier, and Caber Tosser. Get that Pepsi sponsorship, right? And then eight destroy has banned Apep Scrap Tunnels Woodsman and Ardera. Did he forget what happened?
This might just be the same all over again. Right, let's set up the spectator and we should be good to go. What do we feel about those bands, guys? Laser turret. Defenso Chopper, yeah. Good calls, let's see. He may not be banning it, but teching against it. Oh, I'm spectating the same person on both accounts. That's actually Gigabrain. Let's fix that quickly. The new logo is a throwback to the old one, yeah. Maybe that's why we all like it subconsciously. Right. Let's get this going. Semi-final time after this, maybe. I'm just trying... I've said semi-final semi by mistake and I'm trying to recover, but let's forget it. Let's start again. Quarter-final time. I'm Znart against Destroy. They played earlier. I'm Znart's Reckonator deck overrunning Destroy. Let's see what happens. Destroy's decided to not go down the banning of the key cards in that deck. Maybe he's going to counter it. Maybe Snart's not even going to play it. That is also an option. It does feel like Chain Lightning Shield Guard Caber Tosser would be good against that. But, um, you know, you've got lots of things like Our Moon could be very good against it. Defenso Chopper, as we spoke about. Laser Turret. But, of course, you've got to remember, it's easy to put these defenses down. But then you've got to think about what happens when they get Scrotillery. What do you have next? If anything. Okay, this match hasn't even begun yet. And Set is leading two games to one against Vickers. Right, here we go. Quarter final time. Yeah. Clap, clap, clap! Okay. Snart against Destroy, Diona against Milloween, and it's exactly what we expected. From Snart's side of things, anyway, we're going to assume there's a Reckonator in there. It's very unlikely to not be. Jolo highlighted yellow because he gets that bonus. The haste. You've got a handful of scraps. Sometimes the yellow highlighting of cards actually works correctly. Hey, it's not. Burning some mana there. Here we go with the Reckonator. Okay, the poison's going to take away the Chisma. Which is always a pain. It's frozen again. I guess it leaves its frost aura on the ground. Just like we've seen with the um, 
the regular curse bearer. Right, okay, brothers come in. Should clear this up pretty quickly. They're going to take some damage from the air, though. Right, spirit's going to be coming soon, I assume. Okay, he goes for the bats. The bats are going to be annoying because he doesn't want to spirit with the bats out because you know they're going to take it. They're going to die pretty quickly. Okay, one spirit on the brother. Second one goes to a bat that dies. Next one goes to... The Golem. Right. We've seen the brother, this brotherween cheese kind of before. Cheese against cheese, but absolutely shut down by Zip Zappinator. XP lead for destroy, though. Taking some damage, but not too much. But now we have a push on both lanes for destroy to deal with. Okay, Chisma and Zip. Oh, this looks like it's going to be too much. He wants to get the brothers out, but he's not going to be able to. Okay, he went down the route of not banning, but trying to tech against it. But it looks like that's not going to work out. Right. 1-0 to Snart. If you're new to the stream, make sure you hit that follow button. You do need to be a follower to qualify for the giveaway. We'll do the giveaway at the end of the stream or after the stream or at some point later between now and the end of time okay looks like dark crow's taking the first game against centera in his quarterfinal as we mentioned earlier set it's two games to one up against ficus it's an art as we saw there Winning the first game. And Disu and Chief look like nothing's been reported yet. No destroy. I thought it would be interesting to see what Snart played when you banned his deck that he's been playing all day, but you decided not to do that. So <laughs> then here we are. Right, game one down. This is best of five. No, three. <laughs> first of five. No, best of five, first of three. God damn it. Why did I get so confused by that? No comment. Masters, prepare to get your minion on. That sounds like we've got a game going. That, that didn't sound right. Okay. So remember, with the conquest rules, you can't play the same masters. And art has to change. Looks like it's the same deck, though. Destroy, Tronvir, and Slithers. Get hydrated. Red alive. 
Unlocked their first perk. Thanks for the follow. Okay. Likely to Scrutillary this. Maybe he's going to suck this off as well. Okay, there's the suck. Scrutillary will kill it now. He decides to do so. Right, here comes. Push at the bottom with the statue. Jolo being a right pain. Oh my god. Okay. Jolo lasting for a long time there. Right, here comes the push from Destroy. Would love to chain that Chisma in the pocket, I think. Mm. Okay. Chisma's still alive. Kind of annoying. Right, here comes the counter push. A okay, chain here is going to be nice, right? Oh, he's... I'm not sure what's happening. What is happening? It's over. Okay. Right, Set and Thick are still... Like, the first two games... Oh, hold on. Oh, it looks like it's 2-2 two, two set against Vickers. Okay. Interesting. Looks like the first two games... Three games were super fast. Sub Muffin. Right, Dark Crow is... 2 up against Sentera. Set against Vickers, 2-2. Two, two. Not 2-0 two, against Destroy. Disu... Only one game reported there. He's 1 0 up. Hey, Michusa, what's going on? With the quarterfinals. Right, Snart against Destroy. 2 0 up for Snart. Right, let's see. Can he close out this best of five? Three nil. Let's see. Hello, 
everybody, and welcome to another exciting round of Minion Masters! Okay, this time it's with Repo! I ain't got to do with it. Chisma fearing himself back helps in this situation because you're just basically banking mana so you can push with it. Chisma gets one of them. Okay. It's a problem. Got a lot of damage on Snart's face, but he doesn't really care too much about that. All these air units at the top are grey, apart from the fact they're at the top. They need to be at the bottom. He wants to put the Reckonator in the pocket like that because he wants it to main DPS. Let's say the Reckonator, the ATG drone, main DPS the Reckonator. The fans are out of their seats, on their feet. Everyone's going hey, Reckonator goes down. The push is still on. The Zeppelin in there. The scraps are swarming. about level but destroy very low HP always a potential of a ruffles heal of course right here we go doesn't want to get the our moon dacard okay handling that nicely DPS these down quickly because he's very low HP. Okay. Oh, Ruffles took a hit. I'm not sure. Was Ruffles going for a heal there? Scratillery is going to be enough though. One HP. Didn't have anything on the ground to take the aggro. That's 3 0 to Snart. Be interesting to see if we see Snart forced to play a different deck at some point if people ban it. Okay. The Snart's into the semi final. We might be able to jump into a different game, depending on what's going on. Dark Crow's completed his match against Sentera. Bring this up here. 3-0. Set looks like he's eventually got through to Vickers. 3-2. It's not, as we saw there. And Disu against Chief. That's one game all. Let's dive into that one. Let's do it! Okay. They should be in game three. Hey, it looks like they haven't started game three yet. Or they haven't started game four yet. Okay, looks like it's 1 1 starting game 3 soon. Disu banned Apep, Flingers, Bounce Free Flingers, Herald R Moon, and Zeppelin. And. Um, Chief bans Apep, Corgoth, Bounce Free Flingers, and Ardera. I believe it's 1 1. Remember, you can follow the brackets in the pinned comment that's probably still there.
Hey, these guys are waiting for something. I hate that when someone spams the Discord and their messages, they get banned and their messages get deleted, but all the channels they spammed in show up as having an unread message. Grrr. Okay, here we go. This is game three, I think, as, as far as we can tell from the reported scores. Hello, everybody! Welcome to another exciting round of Minion so These guys Masters. have uh, taken a, a while to get through their game. Right, DC playing Morelia. And Milloween for Chief. Dragon's Nest for Chief. Let's see what value he can get for that. Doc, uh, Disu does have Bear Valanche, which is pretty decent at shutting that down, though. Okay, Bear Valanche. It's expensive to clear that, but it does hold the bridge, so he won't hate that. But he might hate it when the Dragon's Nest comes out. Korkov is nice in these decks, but he's kind of bugged a bit at the moment where he doesn't always trigger when he should. I think that was just too late. Bounty Sniper without a shield. Does get a spirit though. Like, that's the power of spirits on snipers. Minimum 100 HP on spirits now. Defenso is going to be great against all those worlds. You saw that sniper just ate that chain lightning. Didn't care. Okay, marked, not marked, um, taunt, plus the um, bazooka scrap. Okay, so he puts the units down there to try to tank this. Wants to kill it quickly before he gets another trigger. Nicely done. The problem, though, is those snipers are going to be too far forward, really, now. This is when snipers struggle to get value once they're on the bridge like this. They're just going to get picked off. But uh, he got another hit off. Got a bit of more value out of it. Okay, now he's going for the, the ghost turret spirit onto Gollum. Goes for a random target, but if there's only one target, then it's not very random. Bounty sniper gets absolutely shredded. But there you see the power of the Bear Valanche. But you can see the way the Bear Valanche, the area that it does damage, moves along. So those uh, whelps that were at the front of it didn't take the full brunt of it. Again, marked, plus the Bazooka Scrap. Absolutely murdering that. Doesn't really want the Spirit here on the Lone Scout. Sniper will be much better. But again... He's putting those skellies down to try to tank the hits from uh, Kurnaf. Should Kurnaf get triggered. He might just chain this once some stuff comes out of it. That's, the, that's his chain. He's probably not going to chain his own thing. Sorry, ignore that. Don't chain your own units. Right, more spirits. Deadshot using a lot of spirit tech in this. Bounty Sniper's got the spirit. Blue Golem's got the spirit. All the... Okay. One hit from the Bazooka Scrap. Enough to really well, almost kill it. isu has got a decent XP lead though. Which means perk 3 for him. Which means Queen's Dragon's available. He's going to use it right now at the bottom. He's going to use it right now at the bottom. It's perfect to shut down that lane. Still gets quite a lot of value from 
Well, I mean, the value was that they spawned. The value was not that they did anything. He knows that he doesn't really have a big spell to punish this group together. But this is probably just going to be Milloween perk 3. Just destroys everything, but let's see. A couple of big hits coming out. Nice suck, though. That's a good use of the spellbook. Removes that bazooka scrap, which was going to be annoying. Be hitting the taunt. Right. Dragon's down. That's the one and done dragon, but he does have a big XP lead off the back of that. Already was decently ahead of XP as well. Spirited snipers again. Hey, this is a really nice deck from Disu. I love the spirit tech on the snipers. We haven't seen it too much. And you can just see how difficult they are to remove. They don't die to the chain. That bounty sniper was even damaged. And it still ate that chain. Like it was a hungry boy. Okay, Disu's going to take this two games to one. Shouldn't take too long to finish once that golem gets the face. Best of five, remember. So it's not over yet. Okay, well played, Disu. Probably the favourite deck that I've seen today. Spirits into Snipers. See if that catches on. Snipers in their default state are very weak. They die to a lot of spells. But suddenly, give them that extra 100 HP. There's a lot less spells that will kill them. And we know Chain Lightning's one of the most played spells. Haven't really looked too much at my meta yet, the data from this season, but Chain Lightning's normally one of the most played spells, if not the most played damaging spell. And of, of course, we saw there that the snipers will just eat the chain all day long. Okay, 2 1 to Disu. Best of five, so we still have some gameplay left in this. We remind ourselves, I think the rest of the matches are completed. Let's have a little sneaky look. Okay, Dark Crow beating Sentera. Set beating Ficus. Those guys will face off in the semi-final. Snart beating Destroy. Disu is a game up 2-1 against Chief. And he'll play whoever wins that will play Snart in the next round. Just interested to see. If Snart is forced away from that deck. Right, thanks for joining me today. It's Team Honor Frenzy and Beta Dwarfs Knight's Duel number 33. We're coming up on three years of these tournaments. Big shout out to Beta Dwarf and the sponsors for keeping these going. Remember, these events are open to everyone, regardless of your ability. We now have cross platform availability in Mini Masters, so Xbox, PC, and mobile when it launches. Still waiting to hear some. Uh, some announcements about mobile. They did suggest something was happening before the end of this month. And the month has not ended yet. But we haven't heard anything. So hopefully we'll hear something soon. But I, I really would like them to prioritise fixing some of the gameplay bugs. The disconnect bug, clearly very important. If you're getting disconnects recently, please submit your log files in the Discord or send them to me or just get them to the devs in some way because they've 
There's been a couple of patches this week that have added additional login so the devs can get a better idea of what's going on, what's causing people to disconnect. Because some people are having no problems with it, other people are disconnecting left, right and center. Difficult to figure out why. Right, here we go. Game four. Jisoo's 2-1 up. Best of five. Thanks for tuning into the Caesar Network. Sponsored in part by Bram Flakes. Duel! Right, the owner. Against Mordor. Yeah, Disu is definitely someone that doesn't follow the meta. He is his own meta. As I mentioned before, Disu's one of those players that it's you can copy his decks, but it's not easy to get the same value from them as he gets. Okay, does need the shock rock there because the monkey will lose that trade. Oof, okay. Ah, that those bats are kind of annoying. Oh, he's unlucky there. Always risky with that kind of play. So Chief has... Rendreth ready to go. But the problem with Rendreth in solos, or at least specifically in this matchup, is that Disu doesn't have a lot of things that are worth reviving. Stint is not the best res you're ever going to see. Oh, we got some lag there. I don't know if that was me or the server or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. So many minions, so little time. Hey. So the monkey will beat the assassin as long as it doesn't the assassin doesn't have that original big trigger with the damage. Oh the monkey's gonna survive that, he's gonna heal. We love to see that. Tranquil, such a fun card. Assassin did res, but gets shut down. XP is in Disu's favor at the moment. Going to do some good damage here as well with these Swarmers. Going to take a while for it to die. Okay, resets Mordar's auto attack. Swarmers are going to live for a few more stomps, and they're doing damage the whole time. That's a lot of face damage. Chief has um, has Rendraf, as we mentioned, also has Mardred as well. Neither of them have seen any play yet. And again, I feel like there he's got to play that much deeper to give them more chance of getting that cleaver sacrifice off. Right, okay, so th this is, I mean, the monkey's going to res eventually, but Rendreff is just going to get murdered by the brother of the Void Assassin. It has um, rage, of course. Again, the shock rock to stop the attack. GG drop, the Assassin... Okay, Disu's completed that quarterfinal, three games to one. That final game there wasn't particularly close. Some big heavy cards that just really didn't look like they were going to get too much value. Needed to get some cleaver sacrifices. Could have probably played a bit safer with the sacrifices. Because them getting shut down for almost nothing are too painful. Right. So that is the quarterfinals completed. So we're going to have Set against Darkrow, semi-final one. Znar against Disu, semi-final two. Oh, that kind of rhymes. Nice. Right. Looks like we're going to see Darkrow against Set first. So let's set up for that. Like the players... Could be ready to go. We've got the bands in. So hopefully we can crack on. Right, so reset our score. 0-0. Zero, zero. Reset our round. Semi-final. Remember, if you missed any of the action, it'll be on YouTube tomorrow. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube so you keep up to date on all things Minion Masters related.
and as I mentioned about 17 times, there will be my meta video up there soon for this season. Let's see what's changed and also what hasn't changed. Right, reset the bands. Boom. Right, so Dark Crow has banned Tronvir, has banned Zeppelin Bomber, has banned High Inquisitor Ardera, has banned Herald R Moon. And Set has banned. Tronvir again. Sapphire Pebble. High Inquisitor Artera. And Red Golem! Boom. Right, so those are the bands. Nothing particularly unexpected there. Set, we saw Dark Crow play a Red Golem earlier, so that's probably off the back of that. Uh, Artera, always getting banned. Herald, we know how strong it is. Zeppelins, we know how strong they are. Even not just in a specific Zeppelin based deck. Right. Dark Crow can set. Dark Crow spectated. Set spectated. Okay. Semi final time. Remember, Dark Crow against set. Semi final one. Snart against Disu. Semi final two. So lots of cool action coming your way. Stay tuned. I've hit my mic. <laughs> Consider yourself fingered. Right, best of five. Conquest rules. Can't play a master. If you've won with the master, Tromvir's banned, so uh, neither player is going to be playing those. Let's get ready, ready, let's get ready, ready, let's get ready to rumble! I guess we could do some predictions for this, right? Who will win? Question mark. Dark Crow or Set? Two minutes. Go. Got it. Okay. Right, here we go. We're loading into the first game. mess it up let's just pretend let's just ignore that that's yeah everything's fine right wrecked dark crow king puff set looks like this new slither deck is set's go-to deck of choice not quite the same as we've seen before though remember our moon was banned dark crow banned our moon so that kind of changes the deck a lot. You think that our, our moon would be sort of the centerpiece of the deck and then everything else would go around it. So it's, it's definitely a different strategy without it. You want all the slithers for the res from our moon? So I don't think he has anything to sacrifice. It's going to be some decent face damage though, because these woodsmen are raged. They do get knocked off, but then they're going to absolutely murder this shield guard as well. Look at that, just crushing them. That's a lot of damage. Shield guard goes down as well. That was a big mana investment in defense that didn't achieve too much. And he might struggle to deal with these woodsmen. Gentlemen. 
does have a bridge switch for that caber tosser, but what's he going to do with it now? Here comes the mana puffs. City yourself fingered. All right. I dream when we'll of a day when we'll start seeing the brother of the burning fist some more. That tower looks pretty roughed up. Okay, Snake Druid getting onto that. Shield guard is going to be nice. This is going to be painful though. Okay. Right. He dealt with that well. But a good XP lead for Dark Row at the moment. Perk 3, King Puff is going to be strong, but he's still quite a way away from it. Decent chain. Gonna put some hurting on his face there, because that shield guard is enraged. That was strange. He played that shield guard, so he didn't aggro immediately on the shield guard. And set being behind in XP that whole time, suddenly changed it round at the end there. That angry shield guard on face... If Dark Crow didn't aggro that shield guard correctly, or maybe in a knockback, I'm not sure, but it, he didn't kill it as the first target. Maybe he was concerned about getting poison on his shield guard. He took a lot of face damage from that. Too much face damage. Health is a resource until you run out of it, and then it's a problem. So Set takes the first game. Now, these guys did play earlier, right? Set one that I think. That bridge farm remembers. I would love to see the Brother of the Burning Fist get some more play. I don't know why, I just really like that card. Really like it. Why? It just gets outshone by the Shield Guard. Maybe they should buff Holy Fire again. That'll buff Smite and the uh, Cleansing Totem, Cleansing Fire of Cleansing Totem. Which I don't think is too much of a problem, is it? Okay, so 1-0 to set. It's best of five. We got Snart against Disu. Hopefully waiting for the next... We can watch that next in the other semi-final. Let's have a look at the prediction. Okay, so... Looks like Dark Crow getting 72% of the channel points. Dark Crow looks to be the favourite from the crowd, but is also losing. Turns out you guys know nothing. Some of you know something. Rub with the burning fist! He's just chopped some chilies. That's where the burn comes from. Sisters of the burning fist. They gain buffs when Brothers of the Burning Fist die. Yep, set defending well. Didn't feel like Dark Row had too many tools to defend. 
surprised that their brother got all the way to face and then closed the game out. But it happens. We just have to deal with it. It's only the first game in a potential five game series. Glutes, how are you doing? Stepsister of the Fist. I think I've seen that on a different website. No, let's forget that. It was the same words, just rearranged differently. In, yeah. Mm. Unrelated. What are we waiting for? Who knows? Who knows? Well, I know. It's the players. We're waiting for the players to click play. They've done it. They've only gone and done it. Here we go. Game number two. Minion Masters. Blood imps are out. Right, Dark Crope and a cursed deck with Milloween. Apep for set. I played quite a lot of curse this season, mainly in randoms. It's pretty fun. A little bit brainless at times, but I kind of enjoy it. We got Jing, we got a lot of spells to trigger Jing. It's Milloween, so the spells are gonna synergize well with the Golem, of course. he have now unholy ground is banned because of bugs which kind of make this deck a little bit annoying because you'd probably play it i mean you'd almost definitely play it right instead of flyby so doesn't have toll of the dead does he no he does have toll it is a toll deck okay so ascension is going to give him toll it's going to give him harmful souls buff it's going to give him more on the Skeletons. Red obtained perk number two. So big power spike. But needs to be in contention at that point. Set kind of wasted a mana there, I think. He gong twice. There's no. Just, just let it build up and gong once, right? Missiles are going to be good for dealing with that snake druid. Dong. So this is going as you would expect. He's behind on XP. His Dark Row. He has a late game deck, which should power spike. He needs to be not too far behind. Apep's going to get perk 3, which we know is really powerful. Those three four mana cards. Bye-bye comes in. Okay, he's got some units on the field now, has Dark Road. So hopefully, from his point of view, he can just keep a bit of a push going. Get some of that XP back. He's quite a way down. His Ascension is ready, okay? So he played those before the Dong. Dong. Um, so that he could get the Dong activated as quickly as possible. Had he played it before, he'd have to cycle one more time. 
Get that dong. Jing's been shut down by the chain. I'd like to see Dark Road kind of bait it out and be ready with a spell to juggle it. Harmful Souls doing massive damage now. There's quite a few spells that do damage. Uh, how do I phrase this? They, their damage period is longer than their animation. So, like, Blade Star's the worst one with that. Would like to see that fixed at some point. Some weird things in the air. What are these things? What are these things? I don't know. And Ascension bringing back into this. XP is a long way down. The Dark Crow hasn't done much face damage either. Right, bridges are blue. He will get skeletons from things that die on the Grasping Thorns, but it does take a while. So you can use it to take a bridge, but not immediately. Here they come. Let's take the damage here and try and put the pressure on the bridges. And you get one of them, though. He doesn't have a heal puff as well, so he can't insta tr trigger the Jing, which can be frustrating at times. Right, Mana Frenzy coming for set. Looks like he's going to be able to close this out and take a two game to nil lead in this best of five. Dong. I don't think the dong's going to be enough. He needed a bigger dong. Right, can Jing into missiles here? Yeah, this is going to be too much. This push will probably kill him. The next one definitely will. Set's going to take two games to nil lead here. Oh, Semco, thanks for the follow. We go 2-2, 2-2, 2-2, 2-0. Two, 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 Hopefully that was not confusing. Even when he got Ascension, it didn't really change things too much. He just, it was an awkward deck to get through. The bigger Kinlap, the Snake Druid, the Musketeer, just was very annoying. No one holy ground as well. I think that really hurts that deck because that gives you ways of dealing with their awkward flying units, gives you ways of keeping pressure on bridges when you can't get them in any other way. So I think that really hurts the deck. The Dong. It's the Toll of the Dead, right? Dong. It's the Dong card. This is Dong deck. The dong was just not enough. Okay. Is Set going to do a reverse sweep? If he's going to, he needs the starts. Basically now. Those from a jacuzzi. 
That's our current uh, subscription goal. Not really, but maybe it should be. Be careful what you wish for. Because you might regret it. Dong. Thank you. Love it when you yell dong. So, I imagine that any delay is going to be down to Dark Crow, because Set's probably just changed Master and ready to go with the same deck. The dong is not always enough. That is correct. Yeah. Sometimes you need to have the additional uh, functionality to make your dong explode. An exploding dong, that's where we're at. Okay, game number three. Is the fight back going to begin? Or is it going to be game over? Dark O'Neil set two, best of five, King Puff versus Morelia. We saw Hypnotize played earlier from Dark Crow. It wasn't great, but let's see if we can get some more value out of it this time. King Puff perk three is going to be strong, but we know there is going to be a dragon. Seeing quite a lot of a Kinlap, and you know, a Kinlap is useful because he's just this big brute that takes quite a while to kill, and of course, that makes the pressure on that lane kind of annoying. And that poison, AoE poison, poison pretty damn strong. Right, here comes the Hypnotize, followed up by the stun. Would love to be able to hit that shield guard. One thing I'd like to see with Hypnotize is they change it so the targeting makes more sense. It's not just random and you end up with just weird value or no value. We've all seen those units chase other things when they get hypnotized and do nothing. He would have loved to get one fist off on a face there. Didn't quite make it though. Right, bridge switch. What's his plan? He knows there's a chain, so he can't group too much together all at once. Okay, nicely done. Doesn't manage to stop that shield guard getting on face, and we've seen in previous games how much damage that can do. This one isn't rage though. Okay, this is gonna hurt though. This is where your red, your red, no, sorry, your your blood imps start getting punished. There is a heal puff at the bottom there, but that's a lot of damage from those blood imps. And another one. Oof. Oh, did he get the rage before? I don't think so. He tried to rage it before he hit the blood him, but I think the blood him died to the swarmer. I think there's a chain. Does have the hypnotize as well. Not a massive fan of this hypnotize. Weird targeting going on there. The akin that was like looking around, he's like, do I really have to kill my friend? Yes! Those are the rules. Uh-oh, something happened. My teammate is no longer in the match. <laughs> what does that mean? I feel like this is just the spectate bug and we can still see what's going on kind of behind the scenes. Let's just watch it and pretend we can see what's happening. I assume the match is still going on. They're both still playing, right? Set 162 HP. Blue has earned 
Okay, perk three. Night Puff should close this out, you would think. But there's a nice heal from Set. He's defending this well, but losing a lot of XP. Dark Crow's Blood Imp's getting a little bit punished there. And it looks like Set may be coming back from the dead here. It looked like this was over, but this looks like this could be over in a different way. This is going to be it. Set turned a loss into a defeat. That's the same thing. A loss into a victory. Okay, that was weird to spectate it through that uh, error message, but we saw what happened. Hopefully it didn't affect them. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Dark Crow said he DC'd. Right, okay. Okay, um, that makes sense. Um, normally a DC... ...doesn't change the outcome of the game. Well, let's see. Okay. Let's see what the ruling is on that. Normally the result stands in the case of a DC. Just to stop people abusing it. Did Dark Crow left? Yeah. I, I missed that. But it, now it all makes sense, right? I'll be right back. Okay, let's figure this out. A loss into a defeat, yes. Giga Brain.
Snatch defeats from the jaws of defeat. Yes, yes. Nailed it. You could be a commentator too. Do you struggle to speak? You could be a commentator. The good news is I've got Dark Crow's log files to give to the devs, so hopefully that can help them figure out what's going on. Please hold. Right, just trying to figure out what the rules are and uh, how to most appropriately enforce them.
Um, up G-Town. Right, sorry for the delay. Okay, DC counts, <laughs> set gets the win. Not the ideal solution, whatever we choose is going to piss someone off at this point. Um, but the rules are, ultimately, if the player loses while disconnected, the game result stands. Many fish. Okay, Darkrai won't be happy, unfortunately, but hopefully we got some useful information regarding why he disconnected. Maybe we can get that fixed. I'll send those log files to the devs. Okay. He did complain about having some disconnects recently. Seems like it's still affecting him. But it affects him, but it doesn't affect others. So it's very strange. Some people have these disconnects all the time. I can play for hours and hours without any issues. Okay, so set is into the grand final. He'll play Snart or Disu. Hey, you don't know my room doesn't reek. The ruling is disconnect stands. Okay, we're going to move on to the next game, the next semi-final. A little bit of drama there. Getting DMs. People are not going to be happy, but ultimately, how it works out.
Okay, let's get set up for the second semi-final. So, this could be an interesting one. Snart against Disu. We know that Snart's been playing the same deck all day long. But will it get banned? Will it get countered? Snobby says, after discussion, staff has ruled the disconnect stands. While it was a close call, there was not enough overwhelming special circumstance to justify it. Deviating from the disconnect rule as written. Right. Let's set this up quickly. So player one is I am Znart. Player two is Disu. Right, current round semi-final. Zero, zero. Okay, that's correct. Right, ban information. Oh, hold on. Let's um, set one this. Let's set up this prediction quickly. Right, who will win? I am Snot. Or... Isu. Should be able to have five minutes for this one. Right, let's get the bands. Right, who's player one? It's not. Right, it's not banned. Aper. Tranquil Shehow. Their Valanche. And Brothers of the Burning Fist. Nope. Brothers of the Void. Right. The owner. Bounce Brief Flingers. Zeppelins. Okay. And Scrat Tunnels. Okay. So he's going to have to change that deck up a little bit. Or completely. Right. Apep, Tranquil Shehow, Bevelanche, and the Brothers. And the owner, Bounce Brief Flingers, Zeppelin. Grad tunnels. Okay, so we should be almost ready. Thanks. But if they make the AI better, then most people won't be able to win a game. But we're ready there. Just made a coffee real quick. Didn't start. That's nice. Okay. Who will meet set in the grand final? The 
these two's banned the Zeppelins, the Diona, and the Scrat Tunnels, which would probably be in that deck to start with from Snot. So, let's see if he changes everything or just switches around those cards. Also, the bands, the Bevlanche would be probably good against that deck. The Brothers would probably be pretty good against that deck as well. Right, here we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another exciting round of Minion Masters. Okay, it's not playing a completely different deck. This time, Ardera. Another kind of cheesy deck. Let's see how it works out. The devs are trying to fix the disconnection issues. The problem is they don't know exactly what the problem is. They can't fix it until they know what the cause is. Okay, that's nicely handled. Nothing left to take the buff. there against the owner. Lots of taunt going on. Right, ATG Drone could be really powerful. It can stay in the sky for a while. You see a shock rock here, probably. Beautiful, nails them all. Absolutely perfect. Not easy to kill all of them with the shock rock. Has a very small uh, radius now. He really wants to shut down that Ardera. The key to beating this deck is to shut down the Ardera before it can do anything. Once they get that big push, Ardera dies and buffs everything. Then it becomes a real problem. I don't feel like that was too much chain value. Again, no Ardera. But here comes the Arden Argus. Or oh, ATG drone. It's going to live though with basically 1 HP. Taunt trap to bring everything underneath it. Gonna die now. These are decks sometimes just need one good push. And that's it. Again, this Whirly's gonna shut this down nicely. Ruffles going for a heal. Not the most valuable thing for him right now, but it could prove crucial. Again, he's gonna try and shut this down. He does have. Chain Lightning and the Taunt and the Trap as well. Okay. Burnt the Bannerman trying to save it. Isu in a strong position here. Top Lone Dog. Ruffles does not get the mana. Nice bridge grab at the bottom. He shut down this ATG drone. Does have another rune stone, the ancestor one with the anti air, but they're not able to impose themselves. An ATG drone with one HP could be huge. Mana being burnt from the looks of it there. 
Deadshot's got a good XP lead at the moment. Doing a great job of shutting down Ardera, but as mentioned before, Ardera just needs one good push to change the match. He does have double traps here. See, here he is. This is it. Okay, Deadshot needs to shut this down as quickly as he can. ATG Drone's going to do a good job here, but that's going to be raged and spirited for a while. I mean, I don't know what I mean. Okay. Deadshot's got a good XP lead. He just needs to try to not die to these big pushes. Wants to try to slow everything down as much as possible. If he can get to his mana frenzy. Oh, he's really close. He killed the Aldera. That's huge. Yeah, but the problem is a lot of the logs didn't actually contain any useful information. The, the logs will only log what they're told to log, right? And if they're not told to log the right thing. Right, mana frenzy for Disu. ATG drones up in space. Things getting frozen is breaking a lot of animations. Okay, this looks like Deadshot's getting enough pressure on both bridges to close this out. Ardera just surviving, but not for long. Remember, she does the self-damage, so she will kill herself. That's going to be a GG. Disu takes the first game. And we could see how important it was to shut down that Ardera at source. One time he didn't, and it was problematic. Okay, Disu takes the first game there. And that's how you have to deal with that Ardera. You just gotta kill her quickly. Perfect. Love that. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Don't worry, I'm fine. Okay, I sent Dark Rose Log to the devs. Hopefully it contains some useful information. Yeah, get some good rest, Dark Rose. Thanks for being understanding. again.
<clears throat> right. Oh, welcome to Minion Masters. Give me those viewers, fighters. Let's go. Okay, here we go. Game two. These two's one nil up. Tronvir for Znart. Disu is playing Morelia. Oh, don't worry, I'm fine. Oh, that's massive. What a show! Red has obtained their first perk. their first perk. Oh, he gets the second spirit. That's huge. I thought he messed that up and wasted a spirit, but that sniper squeezed out from a minion master's womb. Took that spirit like it was suckling. Stop. Here we go again. Oh, that's the second one. So that's the double explosion. That's huge. This golem, the taunt's going to save him for now. Disu in a very strong position, did a lot of face damage, and now has a big XP lead as well. There is an Aldera coming. Blue's obtained perk number two. Spirited Sniper again. That Spirited Sniper is actually a beast. That awesome Uncle Mug. Strangely, it was from my niece and nephew. Can he shut this down? Here comes the explosion! It's a, jet, 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 jet shot's gonna take this two games to nil. Sniper! Choo choo! Some dang British sights. Okay, 2 0. What the hell is a pan? It's a pan. That's how much a, a fish costs. One pound fish. Five for six, or one pound each. Right, 2 0 to Disu. Is he going to be in the grand final? Let's find out.
Right, 2 0. Lisu's really had the counter decks for those last two matches. Follow my Twitter. What is your Twitter? Well, a lot of people think that new master is OP as sheesh. It's not going to play the same deck again. Let's find out. But a resonated blast crystal does 120 damage always from the, the spell. And then it drops a crystal. If there's another crystal in play, both those crystals explode for 120 damage each. On top of the 120 damage from the spell... So it can do a lot of damage. Follow my Mastodon. Not even sure what that is. Right, what are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? Unsure. Okay, here we go. Game three. Masters of minions and minions of masters. Prepare to duel. And we're off. Both these players in the top three of the solo leaderboard. Right, Milloween. Fernaf. Against Wrecked. Wrecked with a Bridge Shrine. Dragon's Nest as well. Bridge Shrine's down. Remember, Bridge Shrine will give you double XP for the closest bridge if you have it. Okay, a lot of mana being burnt there from Snark, I feel like. Okay, Whirly's going to be great against these whelps. They will chew it a bit. Not too much. Still two more triggers to come generate some more whelps. The Avalanche was banned, remember, so that will shut this deck down quite a bit if it was available. Okay. Whirly's going to be good here. Needs to watch out for the Jing, though, because the Jing is just waiting to do that. So some base damage there on Dsu, but he is ahead on XP. Doesn't want to waste his spells on the um, Dragon's Nest, because he doesn't have a spell that's going to kill it straight out. And if you damage it but don't kill it, there's still the chance you can get full value and your spells have actually done nothing. He knows he wants to use his Whirly. 
He knows there's a pincer, but the pincer, there's no mana for the pincer yet. Okay, it's going to come out soon. Oh, this is going to be scary. Here comes the pincer. I don't think Red can keep this up. Okay. A lot of face damage coming out, though. Can he shut this down quickly enough? Yes, he can. No healing available, though. Really wants to kill this monkey. Does so. Now he's trying to put pressure on it. Forces the spawn to get stuff out quickly. Whirly Scrat available, but no pincer available yet. He needs to take this window, I think, with the Whirly. Oh, that's a huge one-punch blast. Still no pincer, so he can get the Whirly out. He's going to have to tank here. He can't really tank this on face. Okay, he's handled that nicely. Taking a bit of damage every time, though. And eventually, he's going to run out of HP. Wrecked, not at home to defend at the moment. The Arcane Barrage getting powered up each time he uses it, but it's not quite powerful enough at the moment. Struggling to defend here. Whirly's not available. Pincer is. Big one punch blast. But, oh, in comes! The Bazooka Scrat! Okay. And that's it. Snart brings one game back. I think that Bazooka Scrat probably came out of the Scrat. The cheese date. So that was um quite tricky. Okay, 2-1. Game on. G-Town, go charge your phone. Hey, can not fight back. Avalanche was a good ban because that would have been really painful for him to play all these dragons into from the nest. Right. Remember, we got Set waiting in the grand final. Bisu was 2-0 up, looked like he was cruising, but Snart's brought him back two games to one.
players have taken a while between these games. Masters, prepare to fight each other to the death. Details also really bad. He's not included. Right, game four. Two one to Dizu. Let's do it. Right, it's not playing in a cursed deck. Dizu looks like he's playing the same deck from the last one, I think. Another Dong deck. Red has obtained the first turn. Definitely not a Spenner boy. So we know there's going to be an accursed power spike, but with this deck that Disu's playing with the Bridge Shrine, he could be far ahead at that point. Blue has unlocked their first perk. Already got double the XP. Defenso's going to be great. Sapphire Pebble at the bottom just getting that hit off. Killing one Skelly, but tanking the rest of them is huge. Always annoying when you try to squeeze your unit onto the bridge like that, but then it it sniffs an opponent and comes back. So there will be a dragon at perk 3 for Morelia. And we've seen that win matches that perk 3 push time and time again. Blue just got the second perk. It's only halfway well, more than halfway now to Ascension. 47 of the required 80. to kill the Jing with the pebble, but the pebble went backwards. You really Assassin getting some face value. Morelia can heal, of course, but you, ideally you don't want to unless you're using it as specific removal. You're likely to get more value from the spirits or from the skellies. Again, that defense of being very valuable. Being at the top, being a pain. But it can't take a bridge. Perk 3 now for Disu. 120 versus 92 XP. He's a long way ahead. Perk 3 near there from Znark. Could change things, but he's got to get there first. He's only 10 away from Ascension. We know at Ascension he's going to get the big power spike from all the Dongs. The Toll of the Dead. Plus, that'll probably coincide with the Dragon as well. But this is not a done deal. What was that? Not sure what that One Punch Blast was. This XP lead is getting... A little bit out of control. Perk 3 and a Cursed Ascension for Znar should change things. Oh, Deadshot's messed that Sapphire Pebble up. But he's only 25 XP away. There comes the Toll of the Dead. That's going to be four more Skellies spawning on Disu's side of things. If there's a dragon to support them as well, it could be kind of disgusting. But we're looking at 187 XP for Disu. 
got a couple of bridge shrines out, so he's going to get to Mana Frenzy super quickly. Put them in a line, which may have been a little bit silly, because it's just asking for the dragon to come and murder both of them. Frenzy about to happen. But that's a lot of stuff at the bottom. He doesn't have any good AoE really to deal with. And he has one bridge at the moment, and this is all coming together for Tanar at the right time. Deadshot's just holding that dragon up. Hasn't put any hurt in on it yet. There comes the assassin. Trying to keep the assassin away from the DPS. Dragon's nearly dead. Deadshot's doing a good job. He's got some decent XP left as well. It's not healing, but I don't think that's really too much of a problem for DC. He just needs to clear this up and somehow get on a bridge. The big toll push has come and gone. The dragon's come and gone. For 20 XP, it's not closing in on his own mana frenzy. That assassin gets one big hit off. That could be huge because that bottom bridge is going to go red. Deadshot has decent HP. has a shrine on the bottom bridge as well. Wreck not at home, so he's just tanking this damage, but that's not too much of a problem. He's got enough HP left. And again, the assassin just gets a big hit off, and again, that changed the complete outcome. But Mana Frenzy coming for Znart. Deadshot got there well ahead, but hasn't really been able to put too much pressure on. Okay. Good shot. Beginning to close this out. It's been a tough defense for sure. He's done a great job. He has both bridges and two bridge shrines. He should be generating so much mana right now. Remember, XP turns into mana at Mana Frenzy. XP gives you get from bridges. You would think this is just going to be too much. This defense has been a real pain. Jin goes down. Jin doesn't go down. He's going to get Bounce Breed, though. We've got four Shrines up at once. How do you hold on against that? He's basically getting twice the XP from a bridge. Twice the XP from both bridges. His Barrage is pretty beefed up now as well. This was a close game. It didn't look like it, but that dragon and the, the Cursed Ascension power spike changed everything. Disu's going to be in the grand final from the looks of it. That assassin's going to finish things off. Disu takes that by three games to one. And again, Disu playing a very different kind of deck to what we normally see and making it work. And that is what makes him such a difficult person to play against. You have no idea what he's going to play. Okay, well, Disu got into a big XP lead, and then Perk 3 and the Cursed Ascension really bringing Snart back into things, but Disu able to hold on and close out, but very, very close. Okay. What's up, guys? It's grand final time. Almost. not doing a great job but unfortunately Disu just a step too far no co-host today no FTM is on vacation good luck in your racing Anno okay DC takes that three games to one let's get set up for our grand final it's going to be set against Disu best of five Conquest rules. I'm sure DC will have been following along to see what Set's been playing so far. We know Set likes to play the same one over and over again. The same kind of decks. We've seen that Slither deck. Uh, with or without our moon, depending on the bands. So we will see 
what's going to be banned in this one. Let's... Okay. Oh. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, nice. Right, okay. So... We gotta wait for the bands to come in from the players. Do a little announcement. Kill switch. Yes, they are. It's um, a future deck high up on the 1v1 leaderboard. People sometimes don't necessarily like them for tournament play because of the random nature, but of course they give you a different card each time now, so it's not quite as uh, back and forth as it used to be. It's not quite as risky as it used to be. You don't get the highs, but you also don't get the lows. Um... Wait, is that Nicola? What do you mean? What do you mean? Oh, prediction. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks for the reminder. G, G. Um, hey. Right, start prediction. Who will win? Who will be the champion? Set or Disu set or Disu Def Shot Oni Woni Oni Right, that's up. Don't worry, you can watch it on the YouTube tomorrow. Right, so we're just waiting for the bands. Enjoy your racing, Anno. Okay, we're just waiting on bands from one player, and then we'll have bands for both players, and then we can show them. Quite straightforward. Right, I'll be right back.
Get in the giveaway. Okay, we're just waiting for the bands to come through. They may be about to happen. Thanks for everyone joining today. Who's going to be in the hot tub? Right, we've got the bands coming in. Let me just double check who is player one, who is player two. Okay, set player one. These two player two. Grand final. Scores a zero. That seems correct. Right. Set has banned. King Puff. Sapphire Pebble. Brothers of the Void. And ATG Drone. We've seen Disu get some good value out of that. All of those. Right, so those are the bands for set. And Disu has banned Apep. Bouncebury Fliggers. Herald R. Moon. And Shield Guard. If you ban Shield Guard, does that mean that you legally are required to play if you were going to play shield guard and it got banned do you have to play the brother of the burning fist instead i think that should be a rule right so king puff brothers of the void atg drone sapphire pebble apep bouncebury flingers herald our moon and shield guard those are our bands they are locked in the players now have a small period of time to adjust their decks Right, we're ready for the grand final, guys. Is everyone ready here? Let's get some hype going. It's going to be a little early, but... Yeah! Appreciate you guys joining today. Thanks for the subs and the follows and for your attendance. Attendance is optional, but if you don't turn up, it is noted. Right. Set. Spectate correct. Disu, spectate correct. Best of five, conquest rules, which means if you win with a master, you can no longer play that master. Set has banned King Puff, so Disu cannot play that. Disu has banned Apep, so Set cannot play that. We've seen Set play a similar deck over and over again with different masters. Will that happen? Maybe. <laughs> Sonobi. You don't know whether or not we're in a hot tub. And that's the beauty of streaming. Right, I think it might already almost be time. It's gameplay time. Right, let's stop messing about in the pool. Let's get ready for the grand final. Here we go. Disu, set, stop using this damn arena. Right, it's Volko. It's Apep. Aggro deck from set. We have a Brutish Betrayer in there. He put out some damage. Took damage himself, of course. Brutish Betrayer with the Blood Pack doing damage back. Red has obtained the 
first perk. Right. How's he gonna do with this reboomer? Before reboom gets shut down. Dragon pack does nothing. Doom Cleaver's gonna get the kill here. Gets a reduction. One more on a Nether Bats. Gonna get another kill here. Reduction. Or we can use. Yep. Perfect. Cleaver comes in with the Rage. Doesn't get the Rage on the Rammer, which is annoying. Could be important. Next Rammer comes in. That's the Blood Pact one. Brutish Betrayer. That one used to be the Turncoat. When it got to 50% HP, it'd spin around and attack the other thing. Turncoat's not really um, a, a mechanic anymore, except in Arena and uh, Adventure, sorry. Okay, Set putting all this pressure on, but he's behind on XP, on HP at the moment. And remember, Apep's going to have a shield soon. Right. That Doom Cleaver didn't really do too much. Need to be careful with these whelps though, because they can put out a hurting. Okay, that one's going walkabout. Could be useful to set having that aggro back and then be the potentially useful again. As you can see, I completely fixed that pinkness. Right, this is a little bit disgusting. It's going to slow this down nicely with the bear avalanche. I feel like the bear avalanche wasn't quite placed correctly there, because. He spent a lot of time not in it. Okay. Sets down to 512 HP. Nisu's down to under 900. Both players taking a hurting, but Set's damage is mostly self-inflicted. Oh, he's going to put some extra face pressure on here. That's a nice black hole. Gets a couple of hits out. Doom Cleaver comes out. Was it worth it? We'll find out. This is going to be... Oh, he's got a ghost from Perk. Oh, the ghost gets shut down, though. Okay. Oh, this is going to be too much, I think. It's no way he shuts this down. Doom Cleaver's not going to hit face, but the rammer's on face. Surely he can't defend this. Welp is going to be putting a hurting on that face. Needs to be shut down quickly. DC dropping down. Reboomer's coming in. Is that Reboomer going to hit face? No, it doesn't. 165 HP. 342. This is so close. How does he deal with these whelps? They're not real, but if they get close to face, they will do damage. Okay. Whew. That shot's alive. But how's he going to deal with the next rammer push? Here it comes. Oh, he's got a boomer. That's going to be really helpful. Oh! Did he time that so that the, the rammer hit face and... Oh, he's got a rammer himself! Was that a perk 3 rammer? Did he time that so the so the rammer hit face and the totem at the same time, and basically nullified more damage than it would have done if they had attacked slightly off? Bree, thanks for the sub. Hello. Okay, that rammer was just rubbing salt in the wound. Um. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well, set putting on a lot of pressure, but those blood packed. Minions do punish you. Right, Bree, thanks so much for the sub. Two years of fishy. Some would say two years too many. Right, big aggro get deck, but Deadshot did a good job dealing with it. He got some l fortunate perk cards. He had a shield. The shield on the Border Patrol is great. So his deck's kind of interesting, right? Because you've got the Border Patrol, which then gains shield if you have Crystal Elves under your control. Only Crystal Elves. 
which he can trigger with just the Lone Scout. And if there's nothing else on the field, the Lone Scout costs him one mana. And it triggers the shields on the Border Patrol. So that's like super value because that Border Patrol shield is massive against the, the Reboomer, for example. So that's really nice understanding of the, the triggers and the buffs from Deadshot. I feel like it's been a long while since we've seen peak Disu, but this could be getting back towards peak Disu. He took some time off from the game. He didn't play in tournaments for a long while because of uh, real life commitments, but he's back. He's been playing on the ladder. He's right up there at the top of the ladder and uh, he's playing very well. Playing very off-meta stuff, but it's working really well for him. <sighs> Serious. Okay. These two are game up. Very difficult to defend that deck. Isu did a great job. Though so much pressure comes in. And people make sometimes make the mistake of trying to negate all face damage. And they end up taking more face damage. Sometimes you just have to accept, okay, this is gonna hit my face, but let's see if we can minimize it. And he did that enough. And of course the blood pact is just being punished every time that rammer comes in. And then the perk three rammer. Disgusting. Actually disgusting. <laughs> That's just RNG, right? Okay, here we go. We're loading into game two. Can set start the fight bag. Masters, prepare to get your minion on. Oh wait, that didn't come out right. Let the match begin. Right, set Tronvir. Going back to his roots a little bit. We got the both slither deck. Disu, the owner, might be the same deck. Let's see. Okay, Talik. We've seen him put on a hurting. The prop scrats can be really underrated. They're going to be... Look at the damage they're going to do. Like, Tromvir is just going to look at them while he loses half his HP. They're still going. Okay. Tromvir is going to kill one every six seconds on his own. Hey, probably going to trigger the Border Patrol here with the shields before that dies. Yeah. Has a shield to help this at the top. Not a shield, a, a taunt totem. Yeah, Peak Disu is very, very difficult to beat. Blood Imps out. Doesn't have a good way of really punishing them though. Really wants to get rid of that snake druid. That thing can be annoying. Doesn't want it. Oh, he's, he's messed up a little bit there. He didn't want the poison on his border patrol. Mm, the dong. The gong dong didn't really do anything there. The 
poison will always get applied. It just, it just speeds it up, and if you don't kill it, then it doesn't really do anything. Unless it changes the trades massively. But right, he struggled with this in the past. Is he going to be forced to chain lighten this on his own face? Has the Ancestor Stone. That's going to help. At the Ancestor Stone plus the Ancestor Runic Empowerment buff. XP level. Set just over a thousand HP, so it's taken a lot of face damage, mostly at the start with those prop scrats. He needs to save his counters for that, because they're the things that are doing most of the face damage, I think. Here they come! I feel like he's going to have to chain this on his face. Or the black hole as well to just maximize how much damage they're taking out. Blood imps are out as well. They're not getting punished too badly. But every little bit of damage on them is painful. They're still going. Heal puff is out. Definitely wants to shut that down. Oh, he nearly, nearly kept that alive with the taunt totem. There's another taunt totem. Just delaying everything at the bottom a little bit. Comes both. Oh, he black holes the chain. Nicely done. Getting some good value from that black hole. Offensively and defensively. And the prop scrats again. A kinlap's going to be decent to shut them down. Going double traps on face. They only do half damage, but he's so low HP. Can he even stop them? Yes, he can. For now... Heal puffs out. Needs that heal puff to really get a few pops off. Might get it. Oh, no. Not really. Here comes the counter push. Lisu's has got a lot of HP, though. Doesn't have any damage traps for a while. He's got two torn traps in his hand. Again, nice. Defense there. But here comes the perk push from Tromvir. The perk free push. And it changed things. Heal puff at the bottom. XP in set's favor. Is he going to do this? Okay, heal puff's going to get shot, shut down. But it did get some value. Ruffle's going for a heal as well. That's going to help Disu. Not set. Set is so low HP. Isu's going to save up his two traps. He's going to play them on face. And then he's going to black hole whatever the defense is, probably. Oh, here it goes. Here they go. There's a trap on face. That's it. Defeated. The owner trap's still really deadly, even though they only do half damage to face. Right, 2-0. Great value there from the... Black hole. They're shot using these traps really well. You can see sometimes it's better instead of just using one trap every time you get it. Save them up so you've got a couple of them. And then you can really put a herding on. Um, okay. Game took a while to come out. Probably needs a restart. It's set just chain lightning shield his stuff, unsure. Most of his chains were just black hold. Black hold, not a card we see too often, but Disu using it really well. Removing the defenses. Saving his units. Really nicely done. Okay, so Disu 2 0 up in this grand final, best of five, first of three. He's within striking distance of winning his first monthly event for a good while. I don't know how long ago it was. Oh, I can splash around again, that'll be nice. Oh, yeah. Oh. 
be careful. I don't want to splash it on anything important. Oof. Spoiler. That's just my dick in there. <laughs> Does Wargy re-blep out what? Not sure. If you black hole it before it blops, bleps? Okay, Disu is playing really, really well. Set's giving him a good run for his money, but Deadshot is playing out of his mind. Out of his tiny little American mind. Reminder again that we will put this up on YouTube. When I say we, I mean me. It'll be up tomorrow, so you can uh, follow any of the action that you missed or revisit it or whatever you want. So make sure you go to my YouTube, give it a, th a thumbs up, give it a like, give it a comment, give it a subscribe. Click all the buttons that are positive. Click all the positive buttons. Right, here we go. Game three. Can Deadshot close this out? Can set fight back? I don't know. I don't know, but we can find out together. This is Minion Masters. Throw down those cards. Right, set playing the same deck. Okay, Disu's going for Sniper Spirit deck. Let's see how that works out. Could struggle against the runes of Tronvir. Let's see what removal set has. We've seen how resilient those snipers with spirit can be. Well, that's a nice impetus blast. This is going to be a bounty sniper with spirit. This is not necessarily going to be a bounty sniper with spirit. Does he get lucky? No. Didn't see the animation of where that was going. Probably wouldn't have changed much anyway. It's got too far forward. So it was probably the right call just to take the bridges. Right, spirit on the golem. Frozen. Impetus pushes it back. It needs to be careful he doesn't move it too much because it could end up picking up the shroom. Okay, the shroom is gone. That's a lot of poison. That's a large amount of poison. That's enough poison for it to die, but it has to be. You have to wait for it to die. It's going to take a bridge though, so it still gets some value. That's just the downside of poison, right? Unless you can dong. Right, there's the bounty sniper with the spirit. Slight XP lead for set to start with here. See, here's what you do against this, the Bounty Sniper this situation is you don't play into it and let it get value, right? You let it get to you and then you can shut it down. Oh, that's poison. And then Talox just murdering it. Woof. Double damage on poisoned or stunned targets. Talok just going to town. Feels like he's not that good overall. But sometimes he can be great. Great. 
Sniper's not going to die at the top. Bounty Sniper at the bottom's not really going to get much value pinging away at a big target. What do you mean? Translate it into what? It'll have subtitles that'll probably be in English as well. It might auto-generate subtitles, I don't know. Okay, set is ahead on XP. And the dragon change things for Disu. Even that bounty sniper took a hit from both. Things a beast. The tank. Right, perk three is coming for Disu. Don't think Sets used his wordstone yet. Normally takes a little while unless your cycle's perfectly aligned. Okay, here's his wordstone. Boom. Damage, taunt, frost shield, ancestors, wherever you want. Plus, the next ground minion has that as well. Okay, Deadshot really needs this dragon to change things. Because right now, he is unable to hold the bridges for enough time to change the XP lead. Looks like he's saving up for his dragon. Would love to breath a lot of stuff. Doesn't look like he's going to get that opportunity to do so. Going to spirit it here. Going to spirit a sniper as well. There it is. Look, set so close to his mana frenzy. If he just holds one bridge, he's going to get there. That spirited dragon is tanky, though. But it just feels like Disu's too far behind to catch up. Oh, spirit on the defensive is going to be nice. Spirits everywhere. Keep this bounty sniper alive. Really needs the bounty sniper to pop off. Mana Frenzy now. Well set. Two bounty snipers up. But it's going to be difficult. They're both going to die pretty quickly. That sniper's real far forward. Where's the spirit going? It's on the sniper. The sniper's just going to get crushed. That Snake Druid's going to be a pain. Blood Imp's getting punished, but not enough. Heal Puff following up as well. Mana Frenzy has been for set for a while. That means he should be able to close this out. Looks like we're going to be going to a game four here. Here we go. Set takes it. 2-1. Yes, yeah, so we're going to translate the, uh, the, the video into Cockney for you. All right, mate. Right. It's final time. Get your friends on a dog and bone. Tell them to get down here. Get down the apple and pears. It's go time. So just playing into the bounty snipers. He had some big units to pick up their aggro and just holding on the bridges far too long. Hey, we've got a game on our hands. Disu 2, set 1, in our grand final. Thanks for joining us. Glad to have you here. Appreciate you dropping in. Hopefully you're having a good weekend. And as you can see, Minimasters is in a pretty okay state now. We know it's been rough recently. It's getting better with each patch. There are still some problems, but you can see that mostly, overall, everything is working and functional. So I encourage you to go check it out. See what you think of the latest version. Let's get those player numbers up. 
I've been playing quite a lot in randoms recently. Not too many problems. The biggest issue is the Storm Tamer bug. Would love that to get fixed or um, disabled. But apart from that, nothing too terrible. And if you are having disconnects, please, if possible, send your player log files to the devs because they've added some new login in the hotfixes this week so that they can try to figure out what is causing it. Some people have it a lot, others not at all, so unsure what is actually causing it, but it would be great to get to the bottom of it. And hopefully we'll find out some more news about mobile soon. They did say end of quarter one, which we're still in. And they did re-emphasize that recently in the Discord chat. Something should be happening. The fingers crossed. We'll find out soon enough. I know what's happening, and I can't tell you, and it's killing me! Right, two games to one, Disu leading. I do like that sniper deck, but the snipers, it just feels like you don't have enough DPS with those snipers to just to push through. A kin lap and a big unit's like that. And then you find yourself too far behind. You know, your bounty sniper being locked up on a big target just feels real bad. You want that thing popping off on little things, generating that XP with every kill. That's a good way to deal with the bounty snipers, right? Either let them come to you so you can kill them, or try to tank them with something big, just negate their ability. Right, a little bit of downtime between this game. Hopefully not too long. Don't fick, fick on my accent. Fish and chips. Oi. That's rude. Right. Right, governor. What are we waiting for? Come on, what's this asshole? Let's look up Cockney rhyming slang while we're waiting. Ultimate guide to Cockney rhyming slang. Right. Apples and pears means stairs. Army and navy means gravy. Basin of gravy means baby. Bees and honey means money. Borrow and beg. Egg. Bottle and stopper, copper, box of toys, noise. What's all that box of toys? Can't keep still, treadmill, clever Mike, bike, coals and coke, broke, coat and badge, cadge, collar and cuff, puff, copper flower pot, cop it out, crowded space, suitcase, Oh no, we can't finish this. Yeah, sometimes you get invisible cards if you tab in and out when the game's loading. Or go into the menu or something before it's loaded properly. Master's I'll start playing again and bring out our mobile. Right, James. Fingers crossed. You come. Your wish will be granted. What's that? I can't tell you. If I've told you, I can't tell you. 
Uh, money? No. You can tell me, but I cannot tell you. Right, let's have a look. King Puff. Looks like it's the same deck from set, but he is playing King Puff, which may or may not change things for the better. Disu is playing Wrecked. We've seen how well he plays Wrecked. Right, lots of DPS coming out from that Magma Cannon at the bottom. It's almost over, but it's not over yet, Renzo. He, he suggested there would be some form of mobile. Why do Blood Imps flicker when they take damage? Anyone else ever notice that? Really notice that when they're running at Morelia. Roy. Big blast. Assassin going to town on a Kinlap. Where is he? Uh, okay. That was a good bridge switch. I don't think D2 was ready for it. Liverpool. Liverpool! I'm terrible at accents. Liverpool is... A thick Liverpool accent is very difficult to understand if you're not British. And even pretty difficult to understand if you are British. Oh, thanks, Lone Dog. Boom. Oh, double boom. I said a boom, boom, boom. No, don't want to get DMCA. Right. XP's level. Poke 3 KP is going to be powerful. That's for sure. If the night puffs are available to be generated. One Punch Blast is much better than it used to be where it does that damage nuke now in a line. Oh no, the assassin. It didn't need to die. It was very unlucky there. The assassin looked like it was going to avoid the aggro, but it didn't quite... Can't lose what you never had. Now, Mech McKenna's going to take a little while to get through these scrats with the shields. Kind of annoying. What's that clip? Play Mini Masters, it has no negative effect on your well being. Right, perk three for both players coming up soon. Oh wow. I almost feel bad for the cleaning crew. Almost. Forced. An interesting name. Right, here comes the bridge switch. Here comes the bridge he didn't bridge switch yet, okay. He wasn't at perk three, okay. He wasn't quite at perk 3. I make that mistake all the time. It so looks like you're there, but you're not. I mess it up constantly. It could be quite big as well, because that was going to be some good night puff action. Oh, the switch. The rage at the bottom is going to be a little bit scary as well. This is blame set. This is set. Does the assassin get a hit off? It doesn't go to invisible though, because it is poisoned. Set low HP again. Four seconds to the next bridge switch. Deadshot trying to remove as much from the bridges as possible. Doesn't want those pesky night puffs. Nothing on the bridges. XP lead for set is low HP. Here comes the bridge switch. Blood imps are out. They're not really going to get punished at that particular time. Is ahead right now. It's taking Disu a little while to clear this. Not quite on the bridges yet. Let's have a one punch blast ready to go, but it's uh, unfortunately the real one's at the bottom. He kind of wanted it at the top. Right, Assassin's going to go ham there. 
Well, it's going to get double poison on it, though, so it's not going to live. As the bridge switch gets a couple of night puffs. Yeah, Disu is playing set skin, you're right. Deadshot's just not able to contest the bridges enough. Set's very close to Mana Frenzy himself. Very low HP though, needs to be careful. Can't really afford to put those Blood Imps out because they can be punished. If those Blood Imps come out, that Resonating Blast Crystal is going to be all over it. Set looks like this is going to be making this 2-2 in this grand final. These Night Puffs just being really problematic. Just more bodies to kill. One Punch Blast here. No, the real one must be at the top. Okay, low, low, but Mana Frenzy's coming. Oh, if that assassin gets on face, one punch blast on face. Oof. He's doing his best here. Oh no! Oh, it's so close! Heal Puff's popping at the bottom as well. Oh, he's had to kill that Heal Puff. He's got a Blast Crystal towards face as well. If he can get to that Blast Crystal... Is that Blast Crystal on face? Can he get there? Is he alive? Blast Crystal... Oh! <laughs> was that Blast Crystal going to do enough? Probably does 50% damage, right? 60. There was always also a Crystal there. So that would have been a triple explosion on face, right? That would have been enough to kill him. <laughs> Okay. I believe that was two games all. It looked like he was going to get there. I'm not sure what got the killing blow. Something did. Okay. I need to restart my game. It's loading. Questions for you. Hey, hold tight. It was a close one. Okay. Everything is okay. Okay. 2-2. Two, two. That was really close. You gotta wait for... Yeah, I always do perk 3 just too early. Like, I look up and I see all of the circles full. And then I make that mistake. Well, maybe I don't anymore. Maybe I learn. But I definitely, I've definitely done that. Too many times. Right. That was a close one. Looked like DC was going to cycle to the Blast Crystal and close it out. Set had different ideas. 60 times 3. Yes. Correct. That's what I said!
60 from the original explosion of this spell, plus there was a one already on face, a crystal that would have exploded for 60, and the crystal that had dropped as well would have. Ah, oh, oh, God. So wet. Oh, oh God, I'm covered. Oh, God. What is happening? Oh, God. Wading through it. Crikey. Oh, the heel puff did carry. Goodness me. I'm not a squirrel. That's not true. Okay, 2-2. Two, two. We got a real final on our hands now. It wasn't real before. It's real now. Right. Two, two. They need some time to recover from that refractory period. Oh, you're welcome. Has anyone seen the new Volko skin in game? I don't think I've seen anyone play it. It's a shame because it looked like it was going to be pretty cool. Maybe not many people are playing Volko. <laughs> Guys, I think it's happening. I think we're loading in to the fifth. And final game of this best of five, this grand final. It's more snow arena. Here we go. Here we go. Set playing Morelia, Disu playing Milloween. The sisters are fighting. The winner will take the event. <coughs> I'm losing my voice. Set, of course, playing the same deck. Okay, nice trade at the top there. Okay, Cleaver's going to punish these Blood Imps. You see, he's trying to aggro them as far away from Milloween as possible so he can kill them all himself. Greedy little Cleaver. Okay. Let them die. Got a good head off with that cleaver there. Dong. Okay, that's a healthy dong. You like to see a healthy dong, and there, there it was. This is the grand final. It's two-two. It's poised on a knife edge. Good XP lead though for set to start here. It doesn't matter what your clocks are set to, as long as you're here at the right time, it's fine. Talik again getting that big hit out on the poisoned bow, seeing more and more of him. Little bit of back and forth, a kidnap being a pain, taking a while to die. Gets a lot of value that way. Staying in mana surge, keeping that archer attacking more quickly. Okay, Cleaver. Wants to kill this as quickly as possible because, as we said before, poison is a bit of a beast. 
Tiny bit of poison on the cleaver though. So Talik does a big hit. Cleaver still alive. Cleaver dead. Bolf's going to be a problem here unless they can get through to it. Looks like they will with the bounce breeze plus the arcane missiles coming in. Clutch. Talek just surviving to take that bottom bridge. XP's pretty close, but still in Seth's favor. They get a lot of face damage, can heal. Does have a heal puff. Again, the archer's surgeon. Oh, he didn't quite split them properly. They're both going at the top. Did he want that? Probably not. You might see a dong at the bottom here. Here comes the dong! Oh! There it is. Okay. Good dong action. Okay, nice. Oh no, Cleaver dies. It's kind of annoying. XP still pretty close, but set always ahead. Of course, he's going to have a dragon soon. And that's likely to give him a lot of XP. Nice shock rock went in that trade at the bottom. Set probably saving up. Not for the dragon yet. Thought he was going to spirit that boy, but. Decided not to. Might try to spirit the dragon. Okay, that's a nice pick off at the bottom. Saves that bridge from being turned for a little while. Again, here the Blood Imps are going to get punished. It's 75% of 300 damage every time he hits it. That's hurting set. Needs to be careful going forward with those Blood Imps. Let's get a double heal though, so that off... Off shoots, off cuts, off sets. That's the one. Quite a lot of that. Isu feels like he's catching up a little bit here. Got a big golem at the bottom. It's probably going to be answered by the dragon. Let's see if he decides to do so. No, he doesn't. Oh, pincer before it gets the attack off. That could be big. Spellbook's coming. Is he going to go for bridges or heal? Doesn't go for the heal. Gotta be a dragon now. Here it is. Isu's within 5 XP. It's gonna be level very soon. Where's the spell book? He's gotta put the pressure on. If he can hold that dragon up, it will be great for his XP wise. Going for a double hill. He's gonna get the double hill. The cleaver's gonna come back. Doesn't quite get a hit off. We're gonna see another healthy dong here. Right, look at the DPS of these swarmers on that dragon, trying to keep them behind it. Look at them eating that dragon alive. He's doing a great job, and that's, that's just... If you've ever struggled dealing with the dragon, just watch that. Deadshot's ravenous swarmers ate it from the bag. And Deadshot now has an XP lead. Both players low HP, but Deadshot's about to get Mana Frenzy. Can he close this out? Impetus not really doing too much. Deadshot's going to be on face doing face damage, so Seth's going to have to defend. But he can't hold the bridges as well, which means he's probably going to lose this game. Whirly Scratch still on face. Shockrock to face. Deadshot's going to be the champion. Prime Deadshot has returned. Well played, Deadshot is the champion. He has played so well today. I think it's been a good while since we've seen him play this well.
Okay, Deadshot takes the grand final by three games to two. He was a long way behind on XP, but he just ate that dragon for breakfast, doing a great job with the Ravenous Swarmers. You've got to remember, right, that dragon is 10, 9, 8, 7, 10, 9. It's, it's a lot of mana. But it also, it's it's more expensive than that because it's a, it's worth an entire perk as well. Remember, once that perk comes and goes, it's gone. So that's a very expensive dragon. And he killed it very, very cheaply. Those ravenous swarmers, plus a few small units just to tank it. And that dragon just melted. And that, you could argue, was the changing point. If he hadn't played the dragon, would that have changed things? Maybe. Because as I say, that dragon was a big investment that didn't really do too much. There was not a big lane for it to breath. There was no extra skellies from the ascension. It didn't really attack any anything. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Right, let's see if we can get Disu in. Very well played to set. Got all the way to the grand final again. Didn't quite have what it took to beat Disu. But it was close. Let's see if we can get a Disu um, interview. I think he is streaming as well. Set message me feels like he made a lot of mistakes in that game. He's very nervous against the mighty Disu. Todd's off for a nap. Thanks for joining, Todd. Okay, Disu's going to come for an interview. Don't forget to join the um, Discord, no, the giveaway, that's it. Join the Discord, but join the giveaway as well. Right, um... What do I need to do? Sort of something. Oh yeah, I need to do the um, prediction. Yes, winners interview. Right, Disu is the champion. Okay, enjoy the piece because you know Deadshot's going to speak for about 90 minutes. Right, I'll do the giveaway later or at the end of the stream or at some point. Um... Get prepared. We have to raid someone as well. I'm on Disu stream as well. Let's go.
Right, appreciate you guys joining. It's not over yet. We're going to speak to Disu. If you've got any questions for Disu, let me know. Wait for him to join. Back from the restroom. I think we all need a rest after that. Goodness me. It kind of bothers me that you don't get replays from spectated matches anymore. Oof. Why? WTF. The rolled Ooh. should do. Okay, you should be here. You should be able to hear me, and if you speak, I should be able to hear you. But it, I've muted you. Why are you muted? Oh, maybe you're muted. Oh, wait, 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 wait. This is my fault. Let me fix this. Okay. Yes, I'm not muted. Yes, that was my fault. You were muted, but not by you. Um, okay, gotcha, gotcha. All right, should I do well, my webcam or what? You want no, to no, that? this, this, is, this wow. is fine. This is this is enough. Okay. Oh, good. wow. Talk to me. Congratulations. All right. Talk to me. Uh, I um I was really trying hard for this tournament. Like, I was purposely preparing. I did some streams. I was, like, really focused on 1v1s. Um, that... Keen Puff deck with the propeller scratch and the border patrol. Very proud of that. Made that one day completely randomly, and it's 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 carved through ladder, and it did well in the tournaments. Um, highlight of the match for me was the bridge shrine one. I was very happy just to get to do that in a tournament. I felt like that was pretty entertaining. But yeah, good stuff. Yeah, lots of interesting decks, and I've probably said it loads of times, but you're the sort of player that comes up with interesting decks, different decks, and you make them work. A lot of people try to emulate your decks, but they all struggle to get the kind of value out of them that you can, which I think really sets you apart from a lot of the players. You're so incredible. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I, I enjoy winning with original decks. Everything was original. I I think it makes me um, harder to predict, but also it makes bans versus me. I feel like they're in a way more effective because you can target ban me every game, basically. Um, which is something that hurts a bit, you know, every game. But it also means you see a lot of variety bans versus me, which is interesting. You'll see people ban anything from Brothers of the Void to Tranquil to Spells, and it's stuff that you don't ban because it's meta, it's stuff that you ban because you know I'm going to play it. So I don't think it always works out in my favor, but it's how I like to play, and I'm, I'm always so happy when I get to win with it, because I feel like it is, I think it's good entertainment, and also it's, it makes me happy, I don't know. Um, Set, he is so good nowadays. Um, Annihilated, I don't mean to be rude to Dark Crow, amazing player, but he really, really beat Dark Crow pretty decisively earlier, and um, he's been making it to the finals, I think, practically every tournament. So he's been doing very well, and I'm so happy to have won one. I'm taking him more seriously now, not joking around as much. Um, and as you saw in that grand finals, I brought out the King Puff deck on APEP and Diona, which I was planning to do ever since the switch round. I had that in my head. Thought about doing it in the semifinals, but didn't go for it then. And I feel like it really won me some games. But once he put in Impetus Blast, I figured I'm not doing it anymore. It won't perform well on any of the other Masters. Those three Masters, King Puff, Diona, Apep, I was fully confident on playing it. Any other Master with him counterplaying it a bit, I felt like not going to be a win there. And then I played that Sniper Morelia with the Spirit, which is a throwback. That's yeah, really Yeah, I was going to ask school. you about that because I was really impressed with that deck. Um, and it seemed to do pretty well. Yeah, it got it went two one. I think I played it three times. Um, but you know what really sucked? The reason why I did really bad there is uh, set put in impetus blast for my propeller horn, and then I played a deck where I want to hold snipers in the back. And I basically, yeah. I think that was a big error on my part. I kind of played a deck that's even more vulnerable to impetus after he was counterplaying my previous deck. That kind of set me up for failure. Wasn't happy with that, but 
still very happy yeah, with the performance the, overall. The minimum spirit of 100 extra HP is really beneficial to those snipers. We just saw the sniper just mm -hmm. tanking, uh, chain lightning, and all sorts of things. Like, it just didn't care. And that's really fun to see. And I feel like I can get away without Black Hole with that deck. Since Bearvalanche, basically all the common spells, they don't take out 150 HP. Even Bearvalanche just sits right at 140. So it's really flyby. And if you just take out a few birds, flyby doesn't take them out. It's basically just old school Morelia from back in the old tournament days. So another deck that I was happy to bring out. Pretty original, I'd like to think. We also saw somebody called Snart, I think. Who we haven't seen yes. before um there's rumors about who or who it might not be because they're a very new account and they're obviously playing mm -hmm. very well do you have any ideas who that might be um, i don't think it's an all you don't think it's an all well people keep guessing all right i don't mean to be rude they didn't play like amazingly um and they didn't do anything that stood out to me to a specific player i am very Full props to them for making it to the top four. It's always awesome to see a new name up there. It's, it mm -hmm. always makes the tournament more interesting. Um, if they are in all, I felt like they weren't exhibiting a certain play style that reminded me of anyone. And just the way they were playing felt good, but there were just multiple misplays that stood out to me as a rookie error. And I don't feel like they were an, an alt, even though people in my chat were also speculating. I didn't yeah. get that impression. They definitely played some decks that can really carry you um yeah like the the reckonator deck um the uh, the ardera deck but you did a great job shutting down that ardera uh with your chains mm -hmm. and your spells um so i think you had a good match up against that. that that can be a really difficult deck to deal with if they can just get a couple of those activations together yes i think that my spell dedication was a bit overkill i was really throwing everything at her but it wasn't I mean, punishing you... me yeah, I feel like you just have to be, because once you kill that, it just removes the the wind from their sails, really. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah I've been worthwhile. enjoying Resonating Blast Crystal instead of Bearvalanche in some decks. Bearvalanche is better AoE, but Blast Crystal, it has a lot of value for its cost, and it's especially good against Empyreans, because it almost one-shots Legionnaires, takes away about half of Aldera's health, Spear Throw is insta-killed. Uh, you saw multiple times there where I'd play it right on Aldera, Especially without an Aegis, because that's just value for me if I can take them all out at once. Talk to me about that game where Set was almost dead. You had the Resonating Blast Crystal on Great his face. Choice. You were cycling through to your next one. So you saw that I would have killed him with that, right? Because it yeah. does. It would have been 60 times three. Yeah. Yeah. And he was at like 159, 149, something like that. I, w oh, I had a moment of rage. I've that. Okay, so. When I went to do his tower, hit him with Vect, um, I was spamming my cards because I was trying to play as fast as I could, obviously because mm -hmm. the heal puff was walking to the bridge. Yeah. And um, I accidentally played Scrap Pack because One Punch Blast did not replace my Shadow Dance. It went into a different slot, and oh, Scrap no. Pack was something came out instead, which delayed my One Punch Blast. I don't even know if it would have made a difference because I wasn't, it's too hard to track all those tiny details. But basically, it came out late and his hero puff was on the bridge. So I don't know if the timing would have been better even if I played it first. If I had like two more mana, that blast crystal would have been out before before he got me. But also the hero puff was on his way to the bridge again. That, mm -hmm. would, that was probably the closest match of the tournament for me. Yeah, that was crazy. And in that last game where you absolutely destroyed his dragon, um, do you think that game would have gone differently if he'd not played the dragon in that match? Because it really did nothing, right? It just it spent a lot of mana, didn't really give you mu him much XP, and you killed it really quickly. I was just wondering because it was he. I think he was ahead on XP up to that point. Yeah, he was. Um, I think that one's hard to say. I don't blame him for the dragon doing nothing simply because I went. I put everything down on the opposite lane. Um, and he has to answer that. He was at like 400 HP. Mm -hmm. If he didn't answer that, he would have died. There wasn't really a way for him to support the dragon at that point. I believe what would have fixed it for him there is if he had waited on the dragon and answered my push more, if he got more stall time. Mm -hmm. The problem is, it's just walk to the other side. If it was busy fighting my own push, he would have had the mana to defend because if it stayed on his side, I couldn't have counter pushed. It would have just ran to the dragon. And also, he removed Chain Lightning for Impetus. Uh, and that is what he had to counter my other decks. But because of that, he no longer had Chain Lightning. 
and there was no threat to the ravenous swarmers. All I had to do was not mess up the aggro, and I did not. Uncle, we're not disrespecting Sonar at all. We're just talking about how he played, what he played, and uh, how that makes us feel. If he's a newer player playing that well, getting that far into the tournaments, then he's doing a great job for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that dragon, I think that's that's a perfect thing to show. New people who struggle with dealing with the dragon, just show them that. You know, you spend yeah. a few mana just to keep it pointing away from your swarmers, and they just absolutely melted it. Just really I... nice to see. One more thing I would like to point out, and it is about the dragon as well. There is this bug right now where sometimes her attack delays and she just sits there for a second. It often happens after a stun. Sometimes yeah. she'll like walk forward for half a second. Yeah. That messed me up in my bridge shrine match, but not enough to lose. Because I was answering the dragon. He had both bridges. He was a curse pushing, but I was like 50 XP ahead, so I wasn't worried. And I was answering him with like um, Assassin and Vect or something like that. And I played a distraction. But the dragon wasn't attacking, it just sat there. So my distraction died, and the dragon turned around, started yeah. taking out my assassin. I rough. feel like that's a long-term bug, where it does that weird little walk forward and then kind of regains its composure for no real reason. Yeah. Um, uh, Madman says, how did you feel in that last match? Like, y you're so experienced in games <laughs> and tournament. Do you get stressed in these situations? Like, how, like, it's so close, 2-2, last match. Like, how are you feeling inside? Uh, I think Madman's kind of also teasing me a bit because I was actually, I was kind of, <laughs> I was pissed off. But uh, I get, I get heated sometimes in tournaments. I keep my cool very effectively on stream outside of tournaments, but when it comes to tournaments, when I'm losing to the most important parts, it's important to me, and I lose my cool. And Madman's been in my stream. I think he knows I was raging, which is why he asked that question. Okay, um, but you're just about... raging at yourself, right, for just small mistakes. Yes, essentially, yeah. Um, but. That last match, I was actually very focused. You count, commented on at least one of my pincers. I snapped those, and I was very proud of that before Snake Druid even got a hit off. Yeah. I was very proud of my reflexes in that That's game. That's very good, because this, even if the Snake Druid just gets that one hit off, that delay you can feel forever. But yeah, the, the yeah. Quick, quick reactions, always good to see. And it did feel like uh, my spells could support my push enough for him to not be able to do something about it because anytime i pushed with Gollum and cleaver his answer was either akinlap or i'm sorry i don't remember his name the six mana freezing unit do you remember his name both both yes thank you he has to yes he has to answer with one of those but my spells almost guarantee me damage on his big units i got shot for scrap pack i've got bear avalanche i've got arcane missiles so it's awkward for him to defend which is also why i just pushed top when the dragon came down is i knew he spent a ton of mana and i knew that he had to answer that and it wouldn't be easy destroy says how do you feel about the current state of the bugginess of the game and the potential of mobile release keeping that in mind I believe that mobile release, I have. I really don't have a comment on. I think it is a good shot for Minion Masters, and I'm looking forward to when it finally happens. The bugs themselves, they don't feel that impactful until they are, if you know what I mean. Like, I haven't experienced as many problems with other people, from what I've noticed. In the tournament, I'm very happy to not have any disconnects, because I was worried about that, but I'm glad that the tournaments are happening anyways. I'd much rather have a tournament than no tournament and just deal with the consequences, which I think is probably something you guys discussed before starting the tournaments in 2.0. Yeah, it took us a while till we got back to where we thought the game was in an okay state. And um, if you're waiting for it to be perfect, you know, you're going to be waiting months and months and months. So I um, fully agree. And, and there were no hypergers coming out of cheese state, so I was happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you had many disconnects when you're streaming or just playing normally? Because this is something that really affects specific people way more than others. And... Um, don't really know what that's down to and uh, that's why well, the devs are struggling to, to figure out what the problem is I think half the time has to do with codes especially ability codes I'm guessing um, and ever since the reconnect system was added we have had connection bugs I suspect that has something to do with it especially with the lobby system and anytime you like leave a match it just creates the opportunity for bugs mm. um, I've only had a small handful of disconnects to maybe two or three on stream and up to four off stream so i don't know exactly what causes it but i feel like a player's 
how they handle the game probably leans towards the more bugs they face. Like if you're just happily playing buggy codes that initiate bugs, if you're the kind of person who like wants to leave a match when it's about to lose, you are setting yourself up for more bugs. I guarantee you that. Yeah, it's just weird though. Some people like you read them on the Steam forums. You you'd think that they can barely get through a single game without crashing, and then other people can play for eight hours in a row without any problems. So it's. Mm -hmm. It's really kind of strange and uh, as i said i guess that's why the devs are finding that hard to, to pin that down but as i mentioned earlier the devs have released a hotfix recently that increases bugging no sorry no login increases login regarding this disconnect issue so if you are having these disconnects please submit your log files to the devs so they can figure out what's going on absolutely so i was submitting a two-year-old log file for multiple yes. times in a row. GG. Why does Not it say that. I've got this graphics card from two years ago? Because your log <laughs> is from two years ago, you idiot. I didn't know there were two different logs. And then, you know, I had this crazy theory. I was like, well, my game will lag on stream, and it shouldn't be because of my computer. Is the game having some issue with its graphics card? And <laughs> I was like, building up theories get on nothing. <laughs> but very good tournament. I'm so happy to have participated. I intend to be, you know, continuously active. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, and I don't know. Maybe I'll win again. Hopefully Cat never comes back. <laughs> <laughs> Is this Peak DC? No, Peak DC was 2019. Peak DC was I was a 15-year-old slash 16-year-old who didn't have a job and played Minion Masters. That was Peak DC. <laughs> Can you get back to Peak DC? That was an entirely different time. I felt like when uh, you remember the TCL tournaments, the Challengers League, back mm. in those days. Yeah. That was when I was in my prime with one drops being as they were. And I was getting so good. I started beating Cat a couple times. And then you get the one drop change, meta shifts dramatically, the TCL stops. And uh, I don't think I've ever been as good as I was in those days. But I don't know if I can say I can get back there because the game's so different now. There's a million different things. Air units don't take bridges, spells are more expensive. Yeah. thousands of changes literal thousands um but i think i can i think i can win more tournaments i think i can get to the point where i'm confident in winning i mean i was pretty confident today but i do believe i will be successful in the future i just hope <laughs> hope a certain player has had enough of minion masters <laughs> yeah well you know cat might come back but he might. You know, if he takes a long time off do you think that's even if he does come back, do you think it's going to take him a while to get back up to speed? You know, we saw that with you know, like Memphisto for a while. It, it took him a while before he was right back at the top level. I do think I can beat Cat. I believe that if I if I put in the the time, the most important thing in my head for beating Cat is my decks and making sure I have a lot of variety. I want to be able to trip him up. Uh, that's most important to me when I'm facing Cat. Like way back when I played that Woodsman Adventure Parody deck before Woodsman was meta in one of the tournaments like four ish months ago. I beat him with that. And then after that, he creamed me. But <laughs> if I can just do stuff like that more consistently, I think I win. Um, not guaranteed, but I, I need to be able to get in his head. And that's yeah. what I'm going to try and do if he returns. If we talk about the ladder as opposed to tournament you're right near the top of the leaderboard you've clearly been playing a lot in 1v1 this mm -hmm. season how what are your thoughts on the meta as it is at the moment you know you often play a lot of off meta stuff but if we think about the meta sort of overall what are your thoughts on it well i think we have actually pretty good diversity right now ever since the last patch i'm seeing and i have been playing a lot i've seen a lot less um, consistent Woodsman and Accursed Decks, because those were basically everywhere in my experience, last mm -hmm. patch. And they didn't even get nerfed that much, just little touch-ups. But I've been seeing way more variety on ladder lately. The only thing I am not a personal fan of is, I don't like faction decks. I think factions should be a side piece, not a main um, factor in deck building. So personally, I'm not a fan of that direction, but I can keep doing what I want to do, and that's most important to me. But the nothing feels specifically toxic to me. Uh, I just, if I were to have a least favorite, it would be accursed. I don't like facing the same skeleton a hundred times. <laughs> um, yeah, we saw but... you play against an accursed deck, and it was, it was pretty damn close. Like you were ahead, and then ascension with the tolls plus the dragon. I think that was against Snart. Um, that was the bridge run game. Yeah. Yeah, that really, 
That was really close. He was just about to close, he... just able to close it out, but he came back hard. Mm -hmm. The dragon push, and I knew I was going to struggle versus the dragon push because lack of DPS in that deck. I don't have like um, something to really take down the dragon, and I knew going into that match once it was a cursed. I need as much XP as possible because I have had that matchup multiple times on ladder. Um, that was not a first for me. I've played the spirit range up on ladder and I faced a curse. And every time when I win, it's because I drown them out in XP, which is what bridge range supposed to do. But yeah. even with that mana frenzy, I got it right as he got the bridges. So all I was getting was like one more mana from my master tower. The bridges were doing nothing. Mm -hmm. And if I were to give him a tip, I think. He needed to play Harmful Souls more often. He only played on my defense so here and there. I think almost yeah. every time he should have been going for Harmful Souls on the defense so. The defense was very with... good in that matchup. Defense so and Bridge Shrine were all I cared about spamming when I was in Mana Frenzy. Uh, once I had the bridges, of course. But he's uh, yes. Snart's also very high on the leaderboard. So have you guys played a lot this season? I actually haven't. I've only faced him a handful of times. Um, I've won most of them because I've been rocking the King Puff deck mostly. And I think it is the best deck I've built in a long time. And I, there's a few things that counter it. Not exactly interested in talking about those on stream. <laughs> <laughs> but let's just say uh, on ladder, it's, it's, it's been insanely successful for me. And versus the scrap deck, I think I've got a deck advantage. So, yeah. Um, do you think Set was your hardest opponent today? I do. Um... <laughs> Uh, I faced it... Dark Crow. I was going to say, does... say, does it make it easier that he kind of always plays the same deck? Yes and no. If you didn't notice, I was really struggling in the after I won because my decks like I feel like I want to say there's a way out there to just counter him because <laughs> he plays the same thing over and over again. Somewhere out there, there's got to be like a way to just not let him win. Yeah. But I was struggling so much to just find something that can be prepared for other decks and face the same thing again. Because he, he did switch it up at least once, and I can't mm -hmm. live thinking he's never going to play something else. If I think that, I'm just going to set myself up to be backstabbed by a different deck. Yeah. And I, I mean, was he's, really struggling to find something to just take playing, it out for the third game. He's playing something different recently that he, he didn't in the past, but you know he's kind of moved on to a different kind of deck. But um, like in the past, he always used to play the same deck over and over again, but nobody could really, even though you knew what he was going to play, nobody could really come up with a good answer for it. Uh, but he just yes. had a strong deck that didn't have too many weaknesses. Uh, he banned appropriately, and he just played it really well. Mm -hmm. I think um, he likes... I, I don't think he likes deck building. That's a theory. I'm, I think he likes consistency. I think that's his favorite, most important thing in Minion Masters, is he's a big mm -hmm. fan of consistency. And it's a two-edged sword because he gets so familiar with the deck that he's he's a master at it. But at the same time, you know it's coming, which is why I repeatedly played my King Puff deck on those other two masters, is because I knew I'd be good there. But after that, I was constantly thinking to myself, what am I going to do next? Because I can't run that again. He's ready for it. He's counterplayed it a bit with Impetus. I can't play that character, that deck a third time. It was a migraine just thinking about what's the best option here. And then I set on that, that Mellowing after so much indecisive thinking, and I was very happy with that decision. Hmm. Yeah, it worked out very well. Um, hmm. Any more questions? Obviously, you're Anything enjoying else? Minions again more than yes, yeah. for a while, sounds like. Yeah, I was also going to say, I forgot, but I was going to say earlier that when Set was, you said earlier how he was repeatedly playing the same deck and like um, getting high up in the tournaments. Uh, I'm not I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, but I wasn't really playing much at that time. Mm -hmm. And I was mostly, if I appeared, it was almost always just to commentate with you. I joined like one or two, and then I commentated like three during that span of 2023. Um, because, you know, I was just not doing Minion Masters, but I'm back now, <laughs> and I'm ready to win tournaments, and I'm looking forward to what's to come, but when I don't you, know, man. Let's when see. you play more often, what what do you think that improves most? Do you think mechanically mm. you're just, you're better, your placement, your understanding is better? You're, you, what is What do you think that playing more, because, you know, your understanding of the game is so good anyway, what, what do you think, does... Does playing more allow you to play sort of more automatically without having to think too much? 
I think I'm pretty good on that front. There's two major things, though, that do stick out when I play more. The number one, and I will talk about this, I made a mistake during the tournament versus set. Um, the number one thing is knowing what my opponents are going to play. Like, being familiar with their selection of decks. If I step away for a while, I, I come back to a tournament, and I'm like, so what is Darko going to play? You know, stuff like that. Is that based on what you see them playing in previous events, or on ladder, or a bit of both? Both, yeah, both. I feel like Set doesn't ladder too much, and maybe that counts against him a little bit. Maybe he doesn't get sort of you don't get the experience of playing so many different kinds of decks because there's you know there's some things you find on ladder that you really don't mm -hmm. find a, a, again in the tournament. So I think that's well, also I, uh, is really good. I also I forget that's the thing. If I take a break, I'm not going to come back and be like, oh yeah, he plays all of this. And when I faced him in Swiss, I did not ban Harold, and he played that deck all three games. And before we even matched, it, before we even played our first game, I told my chat, like, guys, I made a mistake. I did not ban Harold. I should have ban Harold instead of Defenso. We hadn't even played our first game yet. But I remembered that I should have done that. What happened? He beat me with Harold. <laughs> <laughs> so I learned my lesson there. Yeah, I banned Harold the... this time around. Those are the lessons you don't forget. Uh... And that's what I really need to keep in mind when I'm playing tournaments, and that's why playing consistently helps. The other thing is deck variety. Like I said, I built that King Puff deck out of nowhere one day. It's mm -hmm. easier to do that when I know what the meta is. Otherwise, I'm just kind of going in blind and hoping, but when I know what the meta is, I take that into account anytime I'm building a new deck. Why do you think some of these cards are really strong and always banned in tournaments like Our Moon and Ardera, but we don't see too much of them on the ladder? Um, and they're although they're like constantly banned in tournaments, they don't really pick up any nerfs. Uh, why do you think that, that is? That's a very good point. I would say people, okay, for me specifically, and I would say this applies to almost every top player, usually in tournaments, you see more control than on ladder. And so you ban those cards that build up push decks because you're, for me specifically, I'm trying out, I usually play control but varieties of control. It varies a lot. But almost any time, I want to limit the amount of push decks I can face. So what I do is I ban some options, and then I just take into account the other ones. Like when Korgoth was really popular, I rarely ever banned him. And that's because I am confident in beating Korgoth. So if people play that aggro deck versus me, I want that. Um, but you see, people don't do that versus me. I, I said earlier, they I get target bans almost every game, which is because they know that's not what I do. <laughs> so, um, it's a bit hard to say for other people's mindsets. I can't really speak on behalf of like Dark Horse Set as to why they always ban the push decks, but they do good, you know? I just think ladder players kind of go with the flow a lot of the time, and then that's why you don't see the same cards that are banned in tournaments, because when a new card comes out, when balance changes happen, it just kind of changes what everyone plays. But then the tournament players always have these decks in their pocket that they're ready to bring out when it's time. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, how do you enjoy, how do you like, how do you find the deck search? Is that a good thing that they added to the game from someone who's got a lot of decks point of view? What's the deck search? Oh, Hold my on. God. Are you Hold on, let me see. Uh, deck search, can you search names? I've never used it. You can search names, cards, masters. Okay, uh, that's a great why, feature. Why do they bother? Thanks, devs. <laughs> no, that's cool. Um, you know what, what, what my biggest issue is, is that you can't copy deck text anymore, and you can't stream it. That is a major, that's like the biggest quality of life removal since 2.0, in my opinion. And it's, I haven't even organized my deck since 2.0 came out. So I haven't really used the deck searching feature because my decks are all a jumbled mess, but I, I only have like five or six pages and the rest are sitting in text on Discord, basically completely useless because I can't copy them. I'd have to do it card by card, name by name, and I'm not ready to do that right now. <laughs> yeah, stripping out some of that functionality is kind of annoying and hopefully it'll come back bigger and better than ever, but for now yeah. it doesn't. Um. Hmm. Do you have any questions for me or for yourself? <laughs> oh, when am I gonna get married? Oh my God! Wait, is that for me or for you? Uh, no. <laughs> Anyways, so I was thinking, uh, are you gonna be streaming more fish? Hmm? Yes. Hmm? Sure. Hmm? 
Yes. You know what everyone says when I start streaming? You know what Show Me The Money says? He says, you stream more than fish, <laughs> even if it's only once or twice a week. Every time well, someone brings it up. Money's a piece of shit. What can I say? <laughs> but he might also be accurate. But oh, I don't know. I don't have any. I've been talking a lot, so I'm pretty much out of questions. If you got anything else, I'd love to answer though. What do you feel? How do you feel about the new cards, Rise Star and the Crossbow Clubhouse? I'm sure you've faced them, seen them about yeah. on, on the ladder. Obviously, not in the event today, but next the next tournament they will be. How do you feel about those? Because there was a lot of people saying, "Oh, this card's awful." Talking about Rise Star, and other people saying mm. this card's OP as hell and there was a lot of um disconnect between those two things what is your thoughts on it i'd say first of all that it would he is all about reducing range damage otherwise he's not worth it as a 10 mana minion so if you're saying he's broken that's because you're playing range units if you're saying he's not that's because you're playing melee units um i think not i can't just discriminate you know i can't say everybody's saying what they say because they're losing against them or winning against them because of what their deck is, but he's one of those characters where if you go in and you're playing like Volko, so you got a lot of melee minions with rage, I think you got good odds of beating him. But if you're playing like Stormbringer, you're gonna hate his guts. <laughs> yeah. Um, me personally, I I like the new deck that he brings. He brings a whole new style as a single card, which I think is cool. I think it's a bit of an unhealthy design to have something that reduces half of range damage. So just you can put a horde down. Of legionnaires right four legionnaires and suddenly they take half damage which i think is a little debate debatable on how healthy that is for a game it could maybe go down to 40 percent but overall i like the variety he brings it's a bit different and i like that would um, you prefer to see the like the the centurions to have just extra hp across the board rather than this damage reduction i think if they had they could probably get basically um the the Empyrean version of a barrel shield, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think that'd be an easy addition. And then, sort of like how a barrel scratch barrel falls off, their shield will drop when their shield is gone. Mm -hmm. I think that could be a good design. But um, the other thing I think is crazy is Right Star's attack range. It reminds mm -hmm. me of Herald. It mm -hmm. is long. <laughs> and it that is, long is what she said. And thick. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. And it doesn't even say on the card that he's got AOE. So you like you read it and you think, no. oh, I mean, it hits hard. And then you're like, what? It kills things in the pocket? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Um, as for crossbow, the crossbow club, um, I think it's way too weak. You don't get enough stats out of a building for it. And then when the crossbow dudes spawn, well, they're going to spawn into death because your building just exploded. And most of the time, that's because they just got taken out by minions. And your crossbow dudes aren't going to stand a chance against almost anything that just took out your building. So, I think that's a big flaw for them. I don't remember the building's range. I think it's 8. But if it got increased to 10, I think that'd be a big improvement. Yeah, it's the Give same as the crossbow safety. dude. When I think it should definitely be longer. You know, it makes sense, right? They're up in a tower. Yeah, Why would I they not agree. have longer range? And, you know what? Maybe give them... Maybe change the code a bit. Like... One less crossbow dude give him shield. I don't know. I feel like the units themselves need something more to actually matter but than mm. what they have right now. It's kind of an interesting design though, like a building that then I do like it. stuff. So it's I mean, the more and more cards we get added to the game, the more difficult it is to come up with different things that haven't existed already. Mm -hmm. Um you know, you end up with just like a two mana version of this or a four mana version of this and a six mana. You you have all these different yeah. cards that are kind of the same thing. So it's it's interesting to see different stuff and I, I don't know if you checked it and we can't really talk about it i don't know if you're in the private ptr um but there's yeah, some yeah. interesting designs coming up in the future that we mm -hmm. can't talk about um yeah but, like uh, no, no but there's some interesting <laughs> stuff coming uh we know and we can talk about that we've got the new vampiric card coming in the next patch and i don't know if you've read too much about her uh, I haven't looked into it. I know she is a life stealer, but I don't know how good it is yet. I haven't paid too much attention. Yeah, I mean, I don't think she's fully balanced yet. She, a lot of people read her uh, in the PTR and freaked out, and then she got kind of really nerfed. And now <clears throat> she's in a she's in a point where she doesn't have true damage, and she has mm. a frost nova ability, and it feels really yeah. awkward to use the frost nova, and then not be mm. able to kill anything. So. Mm, we'll see if, if she changes a little bit. And on the note of release, having a difficult time releasing new codes, mm. that's not always a bad thing. Because if you if you look at three meta tanks, 
we got like six different ones now. We got the bear, we got the Akinlet pup, whatever it's called. We got the warrior. Yeah. Um, we've got. There's even more. <laughs> I'm just struggling to name them all. And that I think that's good for variety. And it also, even though I'm not a fan of it, it helps faction decks to have the for you know varieties of the same type of minion, because it gives you the option to throw them in there when yeah. you're just building a faction deck. It just makes it difficult because um, they've got to make sure they're all balanced enough that there's not just one that you just always pick over all the others mm -hmm. uh, yeah and that's sort of been a thing as well for a while especially with like two mana and cheaper minions i know that the devs have talked in the past about like split cards being two mana and how they especially range units they don't really like it how there's splits that are, like just almost always use in every deck right like cost producers are the only split ranged but I, personally i don't mind it too much to each their own yeah and people will like complain about only getting two cards a season, but you know we've got so many cards already in the game. We're approaching three hundred cards, which mm -hmm. for an experienced player is nothing. But for new players, you know the the learning curve becomes huge. I mean, it's exciting unlocking stuff, and it's pretty easy to unlock stuff. But for new players, mm -hmm. learning all these cards, how they interact with each other, all these different mechanics and keywords. Um, so you know, I think a couple of cards a season it, it is fine. Um, and we, you know we've always been around that sort of we, we had those big long seasons where we got like eight cards over three months yeah. or something before you know average wise it's kind of the same and i do like the fact that we get this kind of couple of new cards every season rather than every three months a bunch of new cards all at once uh, i do definitely prefer that i would say uh it's not that bad i think it's fine what i really want more of is i just want to i want big balance changes you know I feel like it, with a once a month patch and with uh, if they want to change, no, I don't think you should release more cards. Hmm? Sorry, you cut out there. You said oh. you want to change what? I think it's better to do more balance changes than to release more new cards. I think mm -hmm. the two is fine. I would rather see bigger patches just to shake things up because that would make things more interesting. Like you said, we have a giant card pool, and I think we should receive. I dare say double the amount of balance changes we do just to codes especially the codes that don't do anything right now like uh probably like cheese date you know like it got played during the tournament and i lost to a bazooka, the bazooka scrat. Scrat, yeah that yeah that was a good moment let's talk about that for a sec that bazooka scrat i couldn't do a damn thing yeah <laughs> you hate to see I it was, yeah but i don't think i was destined to win that much anyways because the dragon nest just i couldn't beat it if he was I, when he started when he started out that match on milloween i was thinking this could be that that swarm of totem called arms deck and i'll be in a good place the mm -hmm. dragon's nest not it not it yeah and you had the bear avalanche banned for that one as well which is kind of painful mm -hmm. yes i believe i had arcane barrage that match and i was saying it was kind of useless like yeah. it would be amazing versus swarm of totem or cage prowler if they were playing the other milloween deck but they weren't so because yeah, as i said in the commentary if you haven't got a heavy enough spell you spell the dragon's nest but don't kill it and then they still get the value out of it anyway mm -hmm. uh, which but kind of makes it awkward i believe in the next game i then added defenso over like whirly i think is what it was and mm -hmm. so i believe that was the same game i don't remember man they all blend together <laughs> that but anyways i had defenso for the dragon's nest so i had a much easier time defending and that was a win i believe Right, I don't want to take up your entire evening, but one last thing I want to mention, and it's not really at the front of my mind, but we have got some bridge changes coming at some point, right? They did the survey, right. they said they were going to change it. How are we feeling about that? So if I remember correctly, they were going to bring back unit placement on bridges, maybe, um, like multi-minions, and then they were mm -hmm. going to introduced like a minimum timer to to take a bridge weren't they also going to re reintroduce unit pushing i thought both were coming back with the timer i'm not sure um well i say if they're not in reintroducing pushing that sounds horrendous let's have a look <laughs> but um if they're oh, yeah, no, you're right. pushing as well it says okay. we'll refer both back capping and pushing units onto bridges and we'll make it so that any side will not capture the bridge until they have had units on the bridge for a period of time which they suggest probably a couple of seconds I think more than two would be pretty pretty extreme um but i i like the idea everyone's gonna feel so like happy when you can push units again mm -hmm. I, i'll be one of those people <laughs> but 
Um, let's see here. I think the biggest effect it would have would be on control versus control, where everyone's taking the bridges like back to back to back to back. Because when you have that two second window, I feel like you're gonna be getting XP slower. Yeah, uh, we obviously will. But in those control games where you're just trading all the time, I think there's gonna be a lot more moments where no one gets any XP instead of like, oh, he got one XP, I took the bridge, and then vice versa. I don't think you're gonna see that as much. You think it will help against aggro as well? Because now, yeah, I do you, know, think so. you, you just find yourself with no HP and you're behind on XP. This will definitely help. Nah. Even with the delay, I believe it will help because these aggro decks aren't going to be able to put as many cars on the bridge as you. So when you push off of them, they need. It's not like they're going to be like, I'll just play my cheap minion to take it back. Sometimes that will happen, but they won't always be able to retake the bridge. So even with the delay, I do see it helping versus aggro. I want to see what they decide to do with like units running over the bridge. Does that just not capture the bridge, or is there some kind of inherent mechanic with that? Like, if you just send a rammer across, like, is it, or is that just part of the balance of the rammer that it just can't, basically that, can't capture a bridge? The more you talk, the more this sounds like a giant. <laughs> because now I'm thinking to myself, like, well, you could introduce. Oh, you cut out again there. Oh, okay. Well, I was thinking they'd introduce this mechanic where unit touches the bridge there's a mm -hmm. timer that starts and the unit no longer has to be there yeah but if you even do something like that what happens if there's two units on the bridge and mm -hmm. there's also just so many opportunities for bugs that i see popping up there's all these edge cases it'll be interesting to see how and when because i'm sure they said that they were looking to have it for 2.3 but there's no way that's going to happen okay there's 2.3 speaking of like a week or so away I want those alternate perks. I know they're being teased in game right now. Mm -hmm. That is that is the number one thing for me. If that comes out, the depth that would add to the game is undescribable. Uh and yeah, as long as the perks are different enough and all powerful enough that there's not just one that, you know, 98% of the time you you're just going to yeah. use. But yeah, that does I don't that sounds really interesting. I'd imagine that they would be very different. Like you have one that helps aggro, one that helps control, and there'd probably be some that synergize with faction decks, if I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Like especially on heroes like Valorian, where you are like you are an Empyrean unit just as a master. Or like Wrecked with Outlander, stuff like that. I could see that happening. I don't know if you remember, but many moons ago when this was first suggested, they did do I think it was just a theoretical PTR with suggestions of yeah. The different perks what they could be I, I need to go back and try to find that document because i can't really remember what many of them are but there were some really interesting ones like the ratbo daca which often is completely useless that being switched to something else and you know that was mm -hmm. it really does open up the the gameplay and the deck building and it really could be really interesting if if they get it right but they just need to fix the basics of the game because the problem is that they're, they're working so hard on that right now that they it's difficult for them to Put these new things in the game um yeah. so but yeah that should be interesting the bridge capping one's kind of interesting because i like the fact that they're kind of prepared to undo a change they did before based on what the community thinks you know you, you can mm -hmm. argue whether the whether the community really knows whether most players know what's best for the game or not um but it, it's change as well you know just sometimes change is just good just for being a change right as long as it's not a terrible yeah. change just ch changing things up changing you know people have to readjust to the game learn to the game and you know that's if you play the game a lot that's kind of interesting um i would rather see them if there was one change i'd want not reverted but um redone is the air units i believe they should at least make bridges neutral mm -hmm. um without them being able to interact with bridges you have to overstat them and by yeah. that, I mean, you've got like propeller scrats and they're two mana and they do 50 DPS. And so people, it's very common in decks right now to just throw in like nether bats, or like propeller scrats. And it's not even that bad for the game, but people just throw those in there because it's such good value for that mana cost. And I'd much yeah. rather see them be able to interact with bridges again and balance out a bit from being just like severe DPS dealers and nothing else. Yeah, I mean, there's always been this suggestion about just making bridges neutral, and I don't know if I don't know if that this change with the minimum timer. 
I don't know if that changes whether the that would be appropriate or not. You know, Netherbats mm-hmm. wouldn't be so good at taking bridges like they would before, things like that. Um, I think they would be. I, honestly, I think they'd be fine. You just gotta place it smart. Back in the day, <laughs> when they did take bridges, there'd be a few times you'd see someone spawn Netherbats and they did their like insta jump and they'd mm-hmm. spawn around the bridge instead of on it. I mm-hmm. always laugh. I thought that was one of the most hilarious interactions in the game. But if you just spawn carefully, that doesn't happen. <laughs> oh. we'll see but yeah you're right it does make balance in those cheap cards difficult but th- it yeah. was al- also difficult to balance them before because they were too strong the fact they could take the bridges and then I anything else ideas, you got was, was kind of a bonus I mean I, I do I had some idea what if they sacrifice themselves to take a bridge do you get the value of the unit <laughs> or you get the bridge but you don't no. get both I actually, I was thinking anytime an air unit steps on the bridge, it gets blood packed. So you just put a propeller hood on the bridge, get that bridge, activate Red Golem. <laughs> hmm. Actually, talking about uh, blood pack, that was um, some of, I think, some of the best play that I saw today was how you handled that aggro deck from mm. set with the Rammers and the the Brutish Betrayer in there. Uh, That's a good one to talk about. That was, uh, I was, I was saying that a lot of people made a mistake in that situation where they feel like they have to do everything they can to prevent all damage. And then they end up just taking more damage in the end anyway. Whereas you would just, you, you would accept that you take some damage. You just try to minimize it. Um, and you can see he's constantly pushing, but he's also just killing himself as he goes. Yeah. Yeah. And he was pretty low on HP there as well. Last ram up. Uh, you cut out again. I don't yeah. know if your mic's cutting off or what. That's so weird. I was saying that he was pretty low. By the time he yep. was doing his final push, he was at like 400, and he threw mm-hmm. out both rammers. Yep. Um, I'd also like to talk about something I discussed on stream after that match was when he got me down to 165, he had a blood-packed rammer in hand. Mm-hmm. Totem was not in psycho. I had like 8, 10 seconds before he got it. He could have thrown it down immediately, but I was ready for that. I was hovering, Ber- I was ready to hover Bervalanche, and I had almost four mana. I'm confident I could have stopped it from getting any hits just by throwing everything at it, Bervalanche slowing it down. Um, and then my first poke one was a free wall. That was pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. You did get a but, ghost at one point, but yeah. I think he there was a blast crystal. I think that shut that down. Yes, I ghosted his crack ghoul. That was. I mean, I tried to. I tried to. And I mean, I think that was fine because if he's using his, um, yeah, if he's using his blast crystal on my ghost, that really makes it easier to answer his rammer pushes. So I was fine with that. It was basically, hey, my perk three gets rid of his spell, and I was okay with that. Yeah, your perks get value in all sorts of different ways. And I, uh, I'm I'm pretty known for using my HP sometimes too much. Merlin loves calling me out for it. I, I don't care, man. I need one health. That's it. So 165. He couldn't kill me with Blast Crystal yet. I don't think he had one by the tower. So I was just able to beat him in the end by, uh, you know. I would, I think I would have won even if he didn't play the Blood Pact Rammer. I don't remember the full setting of the match, but I think I was close to Mana Frenzy. And I'm mm-hmm. confident that I could have won with my Totem in hand and all that. So that was a good one, though. And it did catch me off guard, considering he goes from playing the same deck to I'm playing Double Rammer Volko now. Yeah. <laughs> It was a bit of a strange one. I know there was one time he played, uh, I think his Doom Cleaver picked up a Rage buff just before he could get the Rammer spawned. Um, I'm not sure if that hit face, but if, if that did go through and hit face and the difference between that being raged and not raged, that could definitely have changed things just for that yeah. really small interaction. So yeah, those decks are also... really difficult to deal with. Yep. And I also fed him once on accident. I took a bridge of the Crystal Sentry I don't know if you remember the moment. I had Bounce Fleener on his tower, and then I took the bottom bridge with Crystal Sentry. Yeah, and then he yeah. fed the Bounce Berry, and then he fed the Sentry. And as soon as I played that Sentry, I was like, that was really stupid. I just gave him a four mana thing that he could one shot and feed with Crackle. And I was yeah. really worried at that point. I think that was stupid. I shouldn't have taken the bridge at all. I just should have waited. There was one time where you black holed his Doom Cleaver, right? Where you had your Sentry on his just face. Just for literally for 140 tower damage. Yeah. <laughs> 
And one more thing I'd like to bring up is spell animations. I consider it a bug. Ever since 2.0 came out, we've seen people talk about invisible fireballs. Chain yep. Lightning no longer has this giant um, reddish circle for where it's being targeted. Mm -hmm. And Blast Crystal, it's got like a second and a half of delay before it plays. Yep. And if you look at um, a moment from 1.0, you see the crystal hover and then it explodes. But in 2.0, yep. it almost just invisibly delays and then boom it explodes so i almost mm -hmm. can't catch it with black hole which is why i was willing to use it for just 140 tower damage but yeah yeah do they still show the scrolls on the master tower That's there's cool. like a little air animation you see like a whoosh by mm -hmm. their tower but you can't it's so hard to go off of that and sometimes i've had a handful of times throughout my years playing the game where i've I'm like, they whooshed, and I played my black hole, and they played some other spell or something that wasn't what I was expecting, so all I did was waste my black hole trying to predict a spell. So that's the other counterhand there is if it's just a generic animation by the tower, you have to be ex accepting the possibility that they might not be playing what you think, and then you just waste some mana if you're trying to predict it. Yeah, because when 2.0 launched, Chain Lightning felt so different, but I did a comparison and like frame for frame the like doing the damage after casting it was basically the same but it just felt so different which is just all to do with that yeah. animation you don't know where it's going um anymore you can guess based off of like they want to hit these targets so i'm gonna black hole here but nonetheless i would like to see spell animations fixed i don't think mm. it's necessary for their strength for them to be like more subtle i think it'd be better balance if they were fixed Add it to the list. But we have been talking for a long time now, Fish. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. Anything we're, else? We're chilling like friends. Yeah. I'm sick of Almost, these lies. It's like... Uh, I can't yeah, pretend just, anymore. This fish guy gets me in a room and he's like, Yes! Oh. I can talk to him! Yes! A young boy! <laughs> okay, right. That's probably going to be it. Uh, congratulations, Disu. <laughs> Very well played. Good to see almost peak Disu back. And um, thanks for chatting. Always a good time. Absolutely. Uh, I don't thank know if you're you, everyone. Most as useful. You? Thank you. Thank you. Do you say as useful? As you, as useful as you guys are. Yeah. Okay. No, I said as usual. As usual. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Gonna... Why are you not Disu on the tournament website? I just haven't fixed it yet. There's no reason. And hey, man, it's a throwback. All right. Mm. <laughs> it's a throwback. You know. I'm trying to give you a shout out. <laughs> yeah, big streamer here. I stream more than the the shout face of Minion up. Masters, oh but as a fish God. lady. Maybe if you want to catch, face. Uh, totally, totally. Yeah, the face everyone never wanted. Oh, are you going to be streaming? Are you still streaming now? Are you going to be streaming any more? Do you want me to raid? I you am. You... I was. The... No, I'm not. <laughs> I feel like I should have ended stream before the uh, interview, considering my stream has been sitting there doing nothing for the past like 40 minutes. Up to you. But you know, that's Special content. <laughs> yeah, the face of a man and my face is not on the stream right now. Go okay, ahead. well, well done. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, I'm sure we'll see you again in the next one. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I'm going to head out. Thank you. Okay. You Bye. Okay. Could talk to that guy for hours. Yeah, the invisible fireball is annoying for sure. There's also other invisible spells. Again, not sure what the cause is. It's a difficult one to replicate. It doesn't always happen. And because of that, it just makes it more difficult for the devs to figure out what the hell's going on. Right. If you're new to the stream, make sure you hit the follow button. You do need to be a follower to qualify for the giveaway. I'll do the giveaway after the stream. Check your DMs for that. We're going to get ready and go to raid someone. Um, but I appreciate you guys hanging out. Always a good time in the fish tank. Let's have a look who's streaming. Anyone streaming minions? Oh yes, we need to start are waving right come with me come with me we're gonna go raiding get our raid announcements
Check your DMs after the stream. I'll send the uh, giveaway winners a DM. And uh, give you some prizes. As always, the VOD will be up on YouTube tomorrow. So if you've missed any of it or you want to revisit it, you can do. That is allowed. And it is indeed encouraged. Lots of good stuff on the YouTube. Uh, my meta video will be up there probably within the next couple of days. And um, we'll have a good look through what is and isn't strong this season. I'm sure we've got some good ideas based on what we've seen out there on the leaderboard, at the ladder. But we'll see. We'll look at the masters and the cards, the spells. All the usual stuffs. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for the subs and the follows. But thanks mostly for your time. Hopefully you enjoyed the matches. We had some really good matches. Some super close matches. We had a, a winner in Disu that we haven't seen for a while. That's always fun to see. Yeah. Tune in next time. Okay, hopefully we won't have to uh, wait too much longer. If you miss any of the Awkward Wave, it will be in its full glory on the YouTube. Come on, fishy wave. This is awkward. I feel like I'm going to start to wave real soon. I can feel it. It's happening. Come on! There we go! Started. Kind of started. Right, here we go. Let's go raid someone new. They're playing minions. See how they're getting on. I messed it up. Why is that not working? I think it needs to be capitalized. Most time. The raid is happening. It's happening in seven seconds. This is 